Good morning to all the dignitaries, guests and delegates. Great joy and immense pleasure. I am privileged to extend my warm welcome present here for the event opportunities and challenges for medicinal plant-based industries in Winstead countries. As said, the plants have enough spirit to try
grassroots level uh, people who are working in the medicinal plant sector, those are like herbalists, uh, barefoot doctors, how we can support them and bring them into a registered you know, structure as well as give them some uh, opportunity to expand their knowledge and extend this knowledge to a broader mass. Uh, then we have uh, the last technical session as research presentation. There are Parallel sessions we are going to uh, see. There would be some online presentations and there would be some offline presentations. The offline presentation will go on in this talk. The online presentation will go in the next talk, that is hall number four. And uh, then we will uh, switch to the validity session where uh, we will have, a, uh, have our chief guest, Honorable Rasdi Roy, who is a member of parliament. And uh, also he is into so many committees, parliamentary committees, but particularly which is interesting for us is he is also part of Ministry of External Affairs and particularly he is responsible for Beefsteak region. So we are uh, in position that we can generate some policy points from this particular forum and as we have discussed in our last day's proceedings, there are many points which uh, came up during those uh, discussions like uh, we wanted to create a hub for uh, you know uh, medicinal plant sector in IIT Guwahati which can work as a hub for the entire Bimstek region not just the northeast region or India but for entire Bimstek region and there are certain activities we have already identified like uh, uh, we will talk more about that in the way forward but just to appraise what has happened in uh, last day's uh, program, uh, I wanted to introduce these aspects. One is uh, creation of a germplasm uh, for medicinal plants. Maybe we can start with a humble uh, you know, size, but we would like to expand it more. We would also like to uh, pitch in an idea for particularly Bimstek region, if you can have a repository of medicinal plants. When I am saying about repository, we are talking about a digital repository apart from the germplasm thing. And also we wanted to pitch uh, certain exchange programs between these beefsteak countries. So maybe we can coordinate uh, with some of the country, uh, some of the institutes in India as well as from the other beefsteak countries. So I would request uh, our uh, uh, honorable guests who are coming from these beefsteak countries also to extend this message to their respective ministries and uh, line up the you know, universities so that we can get them into this network and uh, we can have exchange programs. And finally, we would also like to pitch an idea about an uh, annual uh, you know, event on medicinal plants for medicinal, uh, I mean for this uh, beefsteak region in particular. So uh, with these words, I don't want to delay it further. Uh, I think our first speaker, uh, Mr. Sharit Tanjin, is having some difficulty in joining. So we will start with our uh, second speaker, uh, that is Mr. Bani Prashad Nirulaji. So probably I'll hand it over to you, Gopi, for uh, further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you and a warm welcome again to all of you. I hope you will enjoy today's session. Now we are entering in the fourth technical session, which is based on medicinal plant global trade possibilities from Bimstek region. The speakers of the fourth technical session will join us in online mode. The first speaker of the day, I, it will be my honor to invite Mr. Mani Prasad Nirola, Deputy Chief Biodiversity Officer, National Biodiversity Center, Bhutan. Sir, uh, I request everyone to give a round of applause. We will take he has worked in National Biodiversity Center, Bhutan, and has received esteemed awards like OEAD Scholarship and Government of India Scholarship. Sir, uh, I request to present your visionary awards in this field. Over to you, sir. Uh, <coughs> uh, 
Good morning. Uh, my name is Mani Prasad Nirula, and uh, I represent uh, a National Biodiversity Center, like uh, uh, the earlier speaker mentioned. And today I will be talking about the medicinal plants and its prospect uh, in Bhutan and in Bimstek region. So uh, uh, I am very much privileged to be part of this event. Personally, we wanted to come there physically to be part of the event, but again, uh, we couldn't. But uh, getting an opportunity to be part of this virtual event is always close to my heart. So I'll uh, request uh, the organizer to uh, uh, present the slide from there because I, because of some reason, I couldn't share from here. Shall we share the PPT from our side or you need yes. to? Okay, yes. sir. From your side. Okay, sir. Is the PPT visible to you, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So maybe in the next slide, please. Uh, so basically, today I'll be talking about uh, briefly about uh, Bhutan's biodiversity. What are the uh, legal and policy framework uh, related to uh, biodiversity, medicinal plants? Some example of medicinal plants as a source of life, livelihood healthcare and uh, their trade and way forward. Next slide, please. Uh, to start with, uh, uh, Bhutan is host to close to 11,000 species of uh, plants, of which many are medicinal plants, and the, many of them are endemic to Bhutan. Close to 140 species are uh, uh, endemic to Bhutan. And because of the unique eco ecological uh, niche, uh, there are lots of medicinal plants. Bhutan is also known as Lohjom, Menjom. Uh, Bhutan and uh, Bhutanese people have long history of living in harmony with nature. And uh, environment conservation, preservation of culture and tradition are current stone of our constitution. It is one of the uh, like two pillars of constitution. And what is, is the it is in terms of global uh, comparison, you know, uh, Bhutan contribute close to 1% of global biodiversity. Next slide, please. So in, in terms of uh, protecting our uh, nature biodiversity, Bhutan as of now has close to 72% of forest cover, out of which uh, 52 close to 52% has been already designated as a protected area, a uh, uh, national park and wildlife sanctuary. Our constitution mandates that we need to have 60% of forest cover for all time to come. And also Bhutan is committed to remain cover neutral. Next slide, please. And Bhutan's, uh, commit, uh, Bhutan and its commitment to environment conservation has been globally recognized and Bhutan has been also like uh, awarded with very much of prestigious awards. Uh, our visionary monarch conservation leaders have been bestowed with different conservation awards like you can see in this uh, slide. Next slide, please. Now, how significant is medicinal and aromatic uh, plants in, in Bhutan? So Bhutan is known to have rich biodiversity and traditional knowledge. Like I said, Bhutan is known as Hojong Menjong, meaning Southern Valley of Medicinal Plants. A local healing system is very much prevalent uh, in the country. Close to, six to 600 to 700 species of medicinal plants are being used by the local healers. 
But again, this traditional knowledge system is dying out. And undocumented traditional knowledge are at risk of extinction because of non-use, non-transfer to successive generation. But again, a documented traditional knowledge are at risk of misappropriation and biopiracy. Rightful owners of the traditional knowledge are not being recognized and not benefited. Uh, Bhutan is also a significant con uh, country in terms of uh, soaring uh, Bhutanese traditional medicine. Uh, uh, Sovaripa is one of the important health provider in the country. Uh, the traditional knowledge medicinal plants are sort of an asset for green economy. And at the time when there is a rush in natural product uh, discovery, there is something that Bhutan can offer to the global world. Next slide, please. Uh, current management and marketing of medicinal plants, how it has been being, uh, being done, you know. Uh, currently, uh, medicinal plants are collected by the community-based natural resource management group, and they are being traded in an open auction, uh, where middlemen buy it, and like they sell it to multiple traders. Mostly it goes to India, uh, uh, you know, but the problem is, we don't know for what purpose it is going out of the country. We don't uh, get uh, much of benefit apart from the price we get for the raw material. Close to 60 species of medicinal plants are taken out of the country. And we know that uh, these plants are being used uh, mostly in pharmaceutical, cosmeceutical, and nutraceutical industry. But Bhutan is not benefiting much uh, uh, from this. Next slide, please. And now, um, uh, because of this, also there is a paradigm shift from conservation to sustainable use and socio-economic development, uh, meaning that uh, uh, we need to derive economic benefit to maximize the benefit from our medicinal plants. Uh, uh, so we are also a focal point. My office, National Biodiversity Center, is a focal point for international treaty for plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. Nagoya Protocol commission for food and agriculture under the United Nations and also Convention on Biological Diversity. So my presentation will basically revolve around this Convention on Biological Diversity, Nagoya Protocol and all. So we work under the framework of these two uh, important protocols. Next slide. So this is the model uh, uh, we have applied, you know. Uh, like I said before, Bhutan is known to have rich resources. Now, bioprospecting, biodiscovery research, natural product development are considered as some of the mechanisms where we can derive economic benefit from our medicinal plants, uh, uh, from our resources, for the enhancement of uh, and empowerment of rural community, promoting people-centric conservation, and again, contributing back to uh, the rich resources. Also, the benefit uh, goes back to the government treasury, so this can be again used to support other activities in the country. Next slide, please. And the improvised uh, mechanism and management of non forest products, medicine and plants. So under this uh, framework of Nagoya Protocol, CBD, uh, CBD you know, uh, so there are no middlemen, mostly no middlemen involved. Now the community-based uh, natural resource management group can directly uh, get in touch with the users uh, under the framework of access and benefit sharing agreement. So there, there uh, we know for what purpose it is going out, for uh, what type of benefit we are expecting from their utilization, you know. And sustainable sourcing and fair trade is very much part of this, you know. Prior informed consent, mutually agreed terms are important part of this uh, framework. Uh, and like monetary benefit, non-monetary benefit, in kind, in gas uh, type of benefit are expected to come from their utilization. Next slide, please. And this is the model we follow. This slide is also being uh, displayed in, in the Bhutan uh, pavilion, maybe uh, in the site event. So our biodiscovery research in medicine and plant is guided by the traditional knowledge. So we uh, go to the field, identify the plant, document the traditional knowledge, and do all the anal analysis uh, in the laboratory. 
do as far as possible in the country. If not, we uh, collaborate and lies with our partners, uh, international partner, to do the end research and come up with the product. And in this framework, communities are very much part of it. And you know, community engagement, empowerment, fair trade, sustainable sourcing is very much important part of this framework. Next slide, please. So uh, this, in this slide, I'd like to say that uh, we said that our biodiscovery by prospective research is guided by traditional knowledge. So for this, we have documented uh, all the traditional knowledge uh, at the country. Uh, our friends like uh, Dr. Bimal Kumar, who is there, is also be, uh, doing some of the work in traditional knowledge. So this is the snapshot of uh, the activity we have done. Next slide, please. So there is also Bhutan access and benefit sharing part. So when we do research, we work on the medicinal plant, by prospect research, and there is monetary benefit coming uh, out of it. And this part is a channel into this uh, 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 access and benefit sharing fund. And this fund supports community-based conservation and sustainable use program. Uh, and as of now, uh, it has close to one, uh, one point, uh, 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 12 million uh, uh, money, um, but again, in future, when it is expected to grow, uh, this can become a trust fund. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, so these are some of the product diversification value addition activities in the country, you know, from lemongrass to rhododendron to uh, artemisia, pine, codices. So many initiatives are being taken in the country so that uh, our like uh, material are not gone out of the country in just a raw form but a, a, in a value added form. Next slide, please. So some of the like uh, way forward and the recommendation, you know. So we like to say that strengthening regional and international collaboration, network for medicinal plant uh, development and biodiscovery research is very important. Capacity building uh, on bioprospecting research, product development at a country level is very much important. Promotion of uh, entrepreneurship culture is also important. Mainstreaming and upscaling this access and benefit sharing principle in terms of non forest products and medicinal plants is also important. And like Dr. Uh, Siddhartha reiterated in the morning, conservation of their jumblasm is very important. You know, the National Biodiversity Center have national plan gene bank and in that gene bank we have all the germplasm of uh, the medicinal planet and other biological resources there is a hurry so uh, i also feel that uh, conserving that germplasm for future use as a genetic insurance is very important with this i would like to end my presentation next slide please okay thank you very much for sharing your profound knowledge with us. Now we would like to ask if there are any questions in uh, the mind so that we can ask, sir. Okay, we've not got any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Now I'd like to call Gopi, sir, to continue the session. And uh, I'll be very much happy to like, uh, make clarifications and all. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Actually, one uh, question we, we were just uh, morning when this uh, idea of uh, you know, uh, network we were thinking of uh, for Bhutan also, because Bhutan being a 
geographical proximity uh, if we consider Bhutan and Bangladesh from both these countries, it is easier to uh, you know have this uh, testing facilities if when we say. So from Bhutan, if you look at uh, the certification and testing uh, requirements, how it is done? So is it done um, uh, within your country or you send samples to other places? How, how it is done? Thank you, Dr. Siddhartha. So you mean uh, the applied for chemical analysis certification yes. and all, right? Yes. Uh, so at the moment, you know, the challenge in our country is the limited uh, technical capacity and the facilities uh, to do all this phytochemical analysis. Mm -hmm. So um, many of the uh, like research activities are like outsourced to the partners, uh, you know. So they do the work, uh, sometimes pro bono, but most of the time uh, on payment basis, you know. Uh, so that's why I, I was also flagging that uh, it is important to build capacity, you know, and here this institutional linkages and collaboration is very important. Like uh, you said, uh, there is an institute in India, uh, there are like, for example, IITG, Guwahati and other. So this sort of like formal collaboration can be made so that it is a win-win situation for both the countries, you know. Uh, so. Uh, uh, for a common goal, so like uh, the uh, like uh, parties in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, they can come together and do the collective work. So uh, this is something we can like think of, uh, you know. And National Biodiversity Centre, the Menjong Sori Pharmaceutical, and the other relevant stakeholder in the country might be also open to this sort of like uh, institu institutional languages, collaborations, so that we grow together, you know. Uh, I was not just asking about the research labs but also about certification because many of these uh, plants if uh, people are thinking of uh, you know exporting or even for national market uh, also if it is to be uh, uh, for a regulatory market like if you are in India if you see there is a framework for uh, for pharma product probably for every country we have a you know fixed set of uh, regulation. But apart from that, even if you were to use these medicinal products for uh, uh, as a uh, food products or nutraceuticals or even as cosmeceuticals, you need different levels of regulatory clearance and certification. So I was asking about that certification uh, chain. Do we have a certification chain in Bhutan? Mani, uh, you are not audible. Uh, maybe partially I will answer your question. Thank you very much for the question. You know, like I said, in Bhutan, uh, this certification, nutrient analysis is a problem, definitely. So, if we have to target our products in an international market, it has to be certified. Mm -hmm. So, maybe organic certified, brand Bhutan certified. So, this certification should be done. Uh, we have initiated this uh, brand Bhutan certification, organic certification. So, at least organic certification, uh, it is being done in the country, but again, like at a uh, community level, you know, like I said, local heating system is very much prevalent in the country, but uh, it is only at a customary level, you know. Uh, the local, uh, these formulations cannot be like traded and marketed at a national level or a international level. So they can only use for the personal and self-consumption at a village and community level. There is a drug regulatory authority and uh, the safety is a concern, you know. So because of the safety and the scientific validation, so although it is historically used by the traditional knowledge holder of this medicine and plants, but uh, since there is no uh, uh, the, the certification being done, so uh, the use of these uh, traditional formulations, you know, local community can only done at, it can be done at, only at a local level. Okay, and then the, the uh, last question from my side, uh, I had, which probably would be uh, I mean, useful information for our general audience as well. Uh, we were talking about these exchange programs. So, uh, from that point of view. Uh, if you are aware that uh, from Bhutan, either with the uh, rest of the Bimstek countries, we have some existing uh, exchange programs in the medicinal plant sectors. 
for scientists or even for uh, scholars, students. Uh, definitely, sir. Uh, uh, like you said, I, I personally know Bimal. You know, you have a good collaboration with Phelps College, and uh, you have uh, linkages with other scholars. Uh, and yes, now after uh, this COVID and now this uh, travel restriction is being lifted, you know, like uh, you can also expand. You know, we can expand this uh, network from only being the Seraph College uh, and limited uh, research and scholars being part of this excellent program. You can really formalize, you know, formalize. So maybe like, for example, just let us keep an example of IIT, Guwahati, uh, your program there. So maybe there can be a formal memorandum of understanding between uh, like uh, the, the institute and uh, maybe some ministries uh, in the country so that, you know, uh, so there is a uh, flow of like research uh, between these two institutes. So similarly, this can be expanded also to other countries. Okay, okay. okay thank you so much. Uh, Unfortunately, we have some uh, change of schedule here. Uh, Mr. Sherab Tenjin, uh, we are not able to connect because he is also supposed to give an online uh, presentation and uh, wanted to talk about Bhutan's, uh, uh, you know, uh, this biopharmaceuticals as well as medicinal plant uh, industry. Uh, and also Dr. A.B. Ramashri, uh, for or also there is some technical issue and we can only connect after 12 o'clock. So I, can I request uh, Dr. Yadav to, yeah, uh, to give your uh, remarks and uh, we can actually continue the flow okay. and then the startup talks we can start. Maybe after the startup talk we can again come back for this keynote lecture and by then we can try to connect with both of us. So thank you, thank you so much, Manji. Uh, uh, please uh, stay online, and probably at the validity session we are going to come up with some way forward, and we need your input there as well. Thank you. Uh, okay, sir. So uh, okay, so I remain online. I mean, it will be our pleasure. <laughs> okay, let me let me try. Let me try. <laughs> Very good morning to all of you. The dignity present over here, scientists, academicians, scholars, and students. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Siddharth, for giving this opportunity to me to discuss and to represent my institute, that is one of the CSIR lab, Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants. We are rigorously working on the medicinal and aromatic plants on the various aspects of the medicinal and aromatic plant. So starting from the farming up to the farm industry, we are trying to connect the all aspects of medicinal and aromatic plants as much as possible. So friends, so here I will discuss that how we are doing the research on various aspects of 
maps. In short, it is called maps, medicinal and aromatic plants. So, first of all, let me tell you that how we are working in this area. CSIR CMAP is uh, one of the premier research institute of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. And its major focus is on exploiting the potential of maps through various uh, processes. Majorly, we are focusing on the cultivation part. And why we are focusing, I will discuss with you. The bioperception is another area where we are prospecting various plant extract phytomolecules for the various biological activities. And it includes preclinical evaluation, it may be in vitro and in vivo evaluation. And the extraction technologies for the various medicinal plants as well as the aromatic oils we are doing at our institute. Chemical characterization. That's a very important part of the maps as Dr. Siddharth was discussing right now. That what is the testing facility, what is the certification. So until unless we certify or we define the quality of plant material that we are using for the various medical purposes, we cannot produce the same effect from the different batches. So that's why standardization and the chemical characterization is one of the most important part where a country like India has to play a lot. Because as a tradition knowledge, we have the Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, and other things, folklore medicines with us. Until unless we define the quality of almost all the formulations and the plants that we are in the country. So that's why it's a very important part, the chemical characterization. And finally, we are also working in the area of herbal formulation developments that how we can develop the various herbal formulation or the aromatic formulation by using these plant crops. CMAP, CSIR CMAP has the advantage that its headquarters is in Lucknow and we have four research centers at the different agroclimatic zone in the country. Like we have one research center in Purara, in Bageshwar, in Uttarakhand, Pantanagar, one is Bangalore, and another is in Hyderabad. So what are the advantages of this? Whenever we want to test the cultivation of any medicinal plants, that what will be the yield, what will be the quality of the plant in the different parts of the country. So we have the facility to test the same at the different research centers of the CSIS maps. So that help us to domesticate any plant which may be of high altitude, which may be of plain, or which may be of any other coastal area. So that help us to uh, develop the improved variety of the plant, maybe medicinal or aromatic importance. So we are engaged in developing the improved variety. That's one of the major contribution of CSI CMAP. How does it help? That we will discuss. And through conventional and advanced molecular technologies like genome editing and pathway engineering, element of herb-based products again the human disorders and diseases, and also building the business models to improve the economy of farmers and the entrepreneurs involved in the cultivation of the maps. So when we talk about the medicinal and aromatic plants, the ultimate aim is to use these plants for the well-being of the human kinds. So, in this process, I have divided the whole process in three parts. As per my understanding, you may be agree for that. When we initially use the plant material in the form of like fresh plant material or maybe the dried plant material, like here the neem leaves or the fruit of the neem or the root of the Glacera glabra, that is called molati, that we chew sometimes, so that's in the diet form, or the fruit of amla. Amla we are using a lot in various formulations. And one of the major, and the very common formulation is the chavan pras, the Ayurvedic formulation. The major part of it is amla. So amla we use as a fresh also. So whenever fresh, we discuss about, or talk about the fresh plant material, 
This is called the herbal drug. Okay, and this is very important that whatever plant material we are using, that should have have of the same quality. Because until uh, unless we produce the plant material of the same quality, the industry cannot produce the finished product with the same quality. And that is the main limitations with us and uh, as well as also with the neighboring countries that we are not able to produce the required quantity of the same quality plant material. And for that, the CMAP is working for the cultivation because cultivation is the only process by which we can get the same quality plant material, the starting material. So this is stage one. So, I mean, a lot of stakeholders, uh, the farmers particularly, they play into it and they cultivate the plant material and give us give it to us. The second part of it is the processing. So there are various industries who take plant material from the industry, I mean, sorry, to the farmer, from the farmers, and they process it. So they can dry it or they can extract it. They can uh, distillate the <coughs> aromatic oils, concentrate it, and they export or give to the other industry. Because uh, every industry is not working on all aspects. So they are focused to the different uh, processes. So when we process the plant material, definitely the value of the plant material of the crop enhanced. So this is the stage where we are also helping in the different mission programs to the farmers. And the final stage is the finished product that we use at our home. So you can see these are the different uh, formulation like uh, Himalaya, they are marketing a number of herb-based formulation. You can see the neem tablet or the haldi tablet, tulsi tablet in the medicinal uh, I mean shops. Tulsi and the, these are the some products that has been developed by CSR CMAP like Aftership Gel Preparation or the Soracin Cream. That's a cream formulation for the services that we have developed. So this is the finished products where the CMAP is also helping. One of the major contribution I would like to mention here of uh, CSR CMAP, that how through cultivation we are helping to our country. CSR CMAP catalyzed the transformation of India from menthol importing country to the largest global producer and exporter of the menthol mint oil by spreading the mantha cultivation in more than 300,000 hectares, developing the short duration and high yielding varieties like Kosi and Simkranti. So how we are helping in the cultivation? Our agriculture scientists, they are going to the different parts of the country. They are visiting, like in Assam, we have a large intervention in the Assam also. In uh, Tirpura, in the tribal area of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh like Bastar, in the Kutch region, in Rajasthan, in Jammu Kashmir, in Tamil Nadu, in Karnataka, in Andhra Pradesh. So through our research centers as well as from the headquarter, our scientists are going to the field of the farmers. They are helping and giving them the knowledge that what is the quality of the soil, what crop you should grow so that you can have the benefit. So we give the agri-technology to the farmers and we also work at our headquarters as well as the centers to develop the improved varieties. Improved varieties means you can get more yield of the phytoconstituents from the same plant material or you can increase the bulk of the plant material. So in this way we are helping to the farmers uh, and giving these improved varieties to the farmers through different programs. So in menthol, we really worked very rigorously by giving these varieties to the farmers and India could become the largest exporter of the menthol I mean, uh, in the world. So that was our major contribution. Another one is we have developed one of the most successful hub of formulation for the management of type 2 diabetes, that is BGR34. 
So this found, this technology we have developed, and this is taken by the Amal Pharmaceutical New Delhi, and they are marketing it all over India very well. This is about 400 crores uh, brand right now. So, and this technology we developed in collaboration with NBRI, that is another CSI Institute in Lucknow. Just to give you the feel that how really we are working. So we developed this uh, different varieties. Uh, I mean, you can see the mantha, different uh, species of mantha are there. Mantha vences, that is called menthol mint. Mantha piperita, that is called peppermint. Mantha spikita, that is called spearmint. And mantha citrita, the bergamot mint. So we developed the these varieties of different species, like menthol mint, same onnati and same kranti. Nowadays, we are giving to the farmers. The sadio, the kosil, the old one, still it is going very well all over the country. Himalaya and Kalka. So these are the different improved varieties of the menthol mint. In the peppermint, we developed the kukrel. Kukrel is actually the name of a, one of the forests nearby our headquarters is situated. So Kukrel, Tushar, and Sima Patra. Uh, we were having one uh, scientist who has retired right now, Patra. He worked a lot. He developed Kosi variety also. He developed peppermint also. I mean, this Sima Patra. So we have given the name Sima Patra. An experiment, MSS-5, Ark, and Nira. That variety has been developed and are given to the farmers for the cultivation and current in bergamot mint. So these are the different improved varieties that we give to the farmers, help them to domesticate in their area, and suggest also that what variety is, I mean, maybe of more benefit. CMAP is uh, working in one of the national mission that is called CSIR Aroma Mission from 2017. The first phase was in 2017 to 2020, where we are uh, focusing on the aromatic crops and giving the knowledge of different aromatic crops to the different parts of the country. Like, as I was told, like in uh, southernmost part, the northeast part, and the in the west, like Kutch. So in all over a part, because with the aromatic crops, there is the advantage that some of the crops may be even cultivated in the flood affected area. Some of the varieties of the crops may be cultivated in the dry area and some in the plains where you have a lot of uh, irrigation, like menthol can be cultivated in the area where the irrigation is available. So as per the agroclimatic condition, we have the opportunity to cultivate to farm the different aromatic crops. And uh, aromatic oils, you know, they are having the various, uh, I mean, applications, particularly in the perfume and other things as the aromatherapy. And also we are developing, I mean, working on the drug aspects of the aromatic oils. So by our intervention in the year 21-22, the lemongrass oil export raised to the record 600 ton uh, with value of about 102 crores. So this is, that's why we have become again one of one of the largest exporter of the lavender soil with the interventions of Aroma, I mean Aroma Mission. So we are going in the second phase of the Aroma Mission where we are helping again to the farmers to help them in the aromatic crops. Uh, for the different plant, like whatever we have developed the uh, varieties and also for the lemongrass, pomerosa, ashwagandha, tulsi. Uh, we have developed the different varieties that can be used in the underutilized rain deficit areas like Bundilkhand, Vidarbha, Kutch, and Mar Marathwada. Actually, we are uh, encouraging the cultivation of these crops, maybe medicinal or aromatic, particularly in the area where is normal um, farming is difficult to do. So that your land is not occupied only for this uh, uh, crop. The food crop is our major crop. And in addition to that, between that, if you can, I mean, take 
the, this crop, so that will give extra benefit, extra advantage to the farmers. So we are encouraging such uh, activities and such practices between the farmers. Okay. We are also uh, having the coordination uh, center on uh, medicinal plants in Indian Ocean Name Associations, Center for the Science and Technology Transfer, where we are helping the neighbor countries, particularly in the standardization of the various plant material, or it may be the, I mean, uh, crude plant material, or maybe the processed one, the extract, or maybe the finished formulation. So we have uh, organized uh, about two uh, training programs for about 10 days, uh, in which the delegates from various countries came to the CSIR CMAP and also got the uh, knowledge about how we can standardize the different uh, plant material and can define the quality of those finished products. As I have discussed, technology dis dissemination and awareness programs, this is our one of the major area where the CMAP is known. So I'm just giving this example. This is the activity of last one year, financial year 21-22, where we have organized various uh, online and offline training programs where about 800 farmers and entrepreneurs participated. And we also conduct one day awareness campaign program just to make them sense to that what practice they can, uh, I mean, adopt from where they can get the information, actually what is required if you are thinking about to cultivate the medicinal or aromatic uh, plants. So this we focused uh, for the farmers, especially in the remote and tribal areas of different parts of the countries. Okay. Dr. Siddharth, you can tell me whenever the time is over, okay? So, training on making of incense sticks using the different offered flowers that also we are helping to the, particularly to the unemployed and the poor women who cannot have, I mean, uh, who cannot invest the money just to start the entrepreneurship. So this is the practice that we are doing. So these are the photographs of the different programs you can see, that how our scientists are going to the different parts of the country and helping to the common people. Kisan Mela is one of the uh, major feature that every year we organize on the 31st of January. So this time due to the COVID, we did not allow all together. So that was the 10 days Kisan Mela was organized at CSR Seema of Lucknow, where about 200 farmers were allowed every day to visit Seema. So about total 3,500 farmers visited and common people about 2,300. The major activity during this we have the display of improved varieties and CMAP products. Live demonstration of the distillation units and processing. Yes, this is again one of the major activity of CSIR CMAP. We uh, install the distillation uh, units to the different parts where the major uh, farmers, they are cultivating the uh, this aromatic crops. So we are helping in that part also. Uh, we have the technology for the improved distillation unit. So we install distillation unit there and they can, they don't have to take their crop too far to get the oil from their crop. So this is one of the major activities. So we give the live demonstration during that time and training and making again incense sticks and rose water Demonstration of early farming techniques of geranium. Geranium is one of the I mean, very important crop, uh, particularly for the export and also for the internal use. Knowledge of incorporating maps into the traditional cropping system. So intercropping, how we can do, like uh, menthol can be cultivated uh, with the sugar cane also. So how we can go for the intercropping, so you can have the maximum advantage. And then distribution of improved MAP varieties, you can see here, this is the queue for the registration. And this is the uh, view of the Kisan Mela, the uh, farmers are discussing, uh, asking their queries with the concerned scientists. Here they are taking the plant material and going for the, uh, taking to their uh, farm. 
our DG, our director, and the convener. They are, they, we all help to the farmers as much as we can. This is, uh, these are the few examples of the products that CMAP has developed. Like we got one uh, essential oil that was giving excellent activity against the P acne. So we developed the anti acne gel formulation. After gel formulation, where we replaced the alcohol uh, with or one of the patented drugs that give the cooling effect as well as the antiseptic action. This is the Moscow repellent cream using the simple citronella oil because citronella oil is known for having the Moscow repellent activity. It is the all purpose cream where we have used the aloe vera and turmeric extract because they are known for the good wound healing activity as well as the basil oil that is the Tulsi oil that having the good antiseptic antimicrobial activity. So, I mean, such formulation we develop, we study these formulation and make them available to the entrepreneurs, to, to, to the starts of, to the companies. So, what happened, what we felt uh, during the technology development, that the startup who want to take the technology, they don't know the market. So, initially they get difficulty in manufacturing the, uh, these uh, products. So, they have to invest the, in the machinery and that is not viable many times. Okay. So, that's why we have the Technology Business Incubation Center at CSIR CMA of Lucknow. So, whatever technologies we have, if they don't want to uh, purchase the technology, they can get manufactured any product of CMAP for one year from CSIR CMA. So, we manufacture for them, they just have to market those products. Okay, so if they find is they can do and go on in that business. So after one year, they can take the technology and can manufacture by themselves. So in that way, we are helping a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and starts up that comes from the different parts of the country. Now coming to the drug part of the herbal products, I will give you two examples. Okay. Have you heard about Artemisia annua? So artemisinin is a anti-malarial malarial drug. Actually, the first drug that was used for the malaria was the quinine, and that is developed from Simcona. But many times, quinine does not work particularly for the cere cerebral malaria, and that happened in about 1967 in uh, China, where the quinine was not helping to get rid from the malaria. So that's where the government gave up uh, challenge to the scientist and uh, Professor Yu Yu Tu and their team worked on it. So Artemisia Anwa, that is called Pingao in uh, Chinese language, they were using for the fever. So they tested it, they got good activity against the cellular malaria and this became very popular uh, later on. So after about, I mean they developed this in 1971 and finally they got recognition in 2015 when the Nobel Prize was given to Professor Yu and their team. So this is a contribution always from the medicinal and aromatic plants that we, about 50% of drugs, their clue comes from the plants, from the nature. So, I mean, still many things are there in the nature that we have not searched. So there is still the opportunity to come uh, from other drug also. So that was the example as I discussed that was the example of traditional knowledge. So from their traditional knowledge, they got this clue and developed the drug. But where they don't have this, they have the high throughput screening uh, facility like USA and the various uh, European countries. So they rigorously screened about thousands of extracts and they came out with camtothacin, that's a known anti-cancer drug and the Texol, Bacrytaxel, that is a very popular and common anti-cancer drug. So that has been developed from Texas Brevifolia. So this is another example of development drug through high throughput screening. So whatever, I mean, facility you have. In India, we have the advantage, like even the neighboring countries like Bhutan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, we have a lot of traditional knowledge with us. We can take the clues from them and can develop the different drugs. One example I'm discussing from CSIR CMAP. Uh, my group is working on psoriasis. What is psoriasis? It is an autoimmune chronic inflammatory skin disorder. So scaling, that 
happens on the skin is a skin disease particularly later on when it becomes see it may it may go to the joints also that is called i mean uh, arthritic psoriasis okay so mostly it happens in the on the skin during uh, uh, and symptomatic relief is mostly done two types of drugs are used for this methotrexate and cyclosporin those are the immunosuppressant drugs because psoriasis is an autoimmune disease so that's why to control the this triggering or the uh, action we give the uh, immunosuppressant drugs and initially we give the topical corticosteroids calciprotein or other drugs for the uh, topical anti inflammatory drug okay so during this uh, aroma mission program we were working on the drug aspect of the aromatic oils so here we screened different essential oils based on their literature so we found that a lot of essential oils they are used as aromatherapy in various parts of the country and also to the other parts of the world also so we thought why don't we use this for this inflammatory a disorder because the essential oil they are used as a very good analgesic and anti-inflammatory drugs uh, also the antiseptic drugs so we were screening these essential oil and during this uh, we worked on this model that is immunoc mode induced psoriatic model in our lab where we observed different parameters like ear thickness pasi is the uh, pasi score is the common practice in clinical where they observe what is the redness scaling the thickness of the skin based on that they uh, determine the severity of the disease and in addition to this we also first time did the costcam skin analysis by using one of the skin analyzer and biochemical parameters we did uh, like cytokine cell 1 beta l6 tnf alpha and uh, some specific cytokines which are expressed in case of psoriasis or uh, il17 and 22 so in this yeah like pasi is a observational parameter that is i mean there is no uh, I mean, technique where we can measure. This is just observational parameter by the clinician. So, in addition to this, we developed this uh, technique through a skin analyzer. So, what does this do? Is take the photograph of the skin and give that how is the curvature, how is the thickness, how is the pigmentation of the skin. So, you can see this is the the first one is the photograph of. Uh, uh, normal control where the area of the triangle is very less when it is uh, disease it is the area of the triangle is very high so in this way we were getting significant difference the disease in the normal one and based on that uh, we finally got the lead in the form of lavender oil where we can see the pasi score how it is affecting so it was given significant activity uh, against the psoriasis this is the uh, estimation of the th1 cell specific cytokines tnf alpha and al1 beta and uh, also another graph is il ts17 so il17 and il22 they are the specific cytokines in case of human psoriasis like condition okay so after getting the activity in the oil we were eager to know that what are the components which are adding to this activity so we did the gc analysis of this oil and we got various phytochemicals available into it where the lenalool and lenalyl acetate were available in major uh, quantity so in, in addition to this uh, other phytomolecules were like trans lenalool oxide lavendulol and other two one okay you can see the, the percentage of these components in the lavender oil so again we did the literature search that what are the activities reported to these components so where the anti inflammatory antioxidant anti cancer activity we consider for this and we also did the in silico analysis where one of my colleague did the docking studies uh, for these molecules and based on the in silico and the in vitro activity we shot this to two molecule lenalool lenalyl acetate and we went for the in vitro in vivo and safety analysis of this and finally we could get a good publication out of it and also 
we got the new lead where <coughs> we filed the Indian patent of it and also developed the cream uh, as a product, as a technology that can be used. So this is one of the first one uh, publication in general of Isno Pharmacology and another one is in front is in pharmacology by using this uh, phytomolecule combination. And finally we did develop the technology out of it and also uh, patented this technology in the Indian market. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your words of wisdom. It will be a great pleasure for us to listen to you again in our future events. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Now I request Isha and Arunima to felicitate Dr. Narayan Prasad. Sir, thank you for being the chairperson of Startup talk, talk Session. Now, uh, I think we may have some uh, queries and all. I request Prasad sir to uh, please continue with the queries. Thank you, sir. Hi, uh, hello. Uh, myself, uh, N.K. Dube from Banaras University. IT machine. Yes, sir. Someone from ICGB is also working, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me that the mosquito has developed resistance against this IT machine also. Yes, sir. this is report. In my opinion, that some is also here. Yes, sir. Are herbal products against pathogenic diseases like mosquito, fungus, pathogenic diseases, where there is problem of resistance development, the use of crude product is better than the isolated active component. But for those diseases which are non-pathogenic, like cancer, diabetes, we may isolate the active Because this development of resistance of these pathogenic products, that is a huge problem. And there is report that against this artemisine also, there is development of resistance. I think this we should do. And my second one is, yes. we are working on this aroma-based products. Yes, sir. Is there any report or trial from CMAP which we expect to use these essential oils as inhaler? because there are many pulmonary problems like aspergillosis. And these essential oils may be used as inhaler. That will be a very, you see, quality type of work. Is CMAP is working on preparation of inhalers from essential oils against the pulmonary problems caused by pathogenic fungi or pathogenic bacteria. Thank you, Dr. Uh, for asking these two queries, really, and they are very near to our heart also. The first thing that uh, Dr. Sahib discussed, wherever we are using the isolated compound, the pure natural product, there are the possibility to develop the resistance against those. So it is always better <coughs> to use the extract or the polyherbal formulation against those. But at the same time, the problem arises whenever we are going when to use the extract, it is sometimes difficult to define again the quality. And until unless, unless we get the same quality of extract, we will not be, get the same therapeutic effect. So I agree with you, sir. It is always better to use the extract instead of pure compound. No, our quality is true. I have some different type of opinion. Sir. This John Cross. Yes, sir. This stone grass is not prepared by active molecules. This is prepared by two extracts, 42 ingredients. They are mixed together in some ratio. And stone grass is there. 
Synergistic effect, there might be some antagonistic effect also. That it works in one type of cell, it creates problems in another type of cell. So there is no other way than to go for empirical study. And there we cannot say that a single compound is better or a multiple uh, compound containing product is a better one unless we really test in real life. Even animal experimentation is sometimes not enough. And the point is, thousands of years of experience may be validated with certain operation definitions. What do we mean by really effectiveness and what do we really mean by safety? So if we have that kind of operation definition customized for particular type of products with a general acceptance within the purview of science, it is possible to have a product uh, who, uh, for this purpose. The main problem is your standardization. Now how yes. do we really standardize and how do we really uh, define quality? So in this case, actually, uh, we may have a flexible range that within that range it is acceptable and that it also has to be standardized. Uh, the ranges has to be standardized uh, within our you know, local context. The idea is to produce something cost effective within uh, the range of the people and that can be better with uh, crude products or semi-crude products or part partially purified products. That is the balance where YFC map should work much more to create these standardization ranges, etc., etc. Uh, uh, for example, the problem with Artemis, you know, of course, the, when we are dealing with a microorganism, they can mutate very quickly. Uh, you could see even COVID-19 mutated so yeah. much within the small period, uh, they, they, they mutate very quickly. But when we are going for a, uh, action on diabetes, for example, with a lot of human genes involved, it's a multigenic disorder, diabetes, hypertension, or most of the chronic disease, those mutations are not so quick. But we have uh, epigenetic effects, so we have to uh, look for real evidence on real people. That is the issue, and there is no other way than to run, whether it's a crude product, whether it's a um, uh, compound, there's no other way to run clinical trials. And that has to be 
uh, again defined whether we can go for only double blind because double blind is not possible with certain crude products. So we have to accept certain type of evidence. And in BIMSTEC countries, it is better that we should define this kind of evidence. So registers, I think, can grow uh, even within the non-pathogenic or so-called chronic disease. So we, should, we should accept the fact, right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Coming to the second query that he was asking, that is, is Sigma working on any aromatic oils uh, which we can inhale and can get rid of such type of uh, infection? So yes, we are working, sir, on that part because uh, in Aroma Mission we are working majorly on the different aromatic oils. So we tested the different uh, aromatic oils against these uh, bacteria which are available in the air. So uh, in the room also, uh, we tested in the in vitro lab also we tested. And we have come up with the lead that we have filed the patent also uh, by using this oil. And oils actually what happens, many oils they are giving good activity, but at the same time they are giving the toxicity. So simultaneously we have to see is there any inhalation toxicity of those oils. For example, a lemon gross. Lemon gross oil is very effective antimicrobial, but at the same time at the desired concentration that is that was giving the inhalation toxicity in the animals. So that's why we have dropped the lavender soil, other oil we have taken. So, <clears throat> so we have uh, filed the patent, we will, I mean, uh, very short, we will come up with the product that will, that can be used as an inhalation therapy in case of uh, such diseases. Thank you. Could you please share? Sure. Yeah. Uh, if you could uh, introduce yourself also. Because you so this is Dr. Vasudev from Nepal. Okay, sir. I'm director of the Ayurveda Medicine. And could you share the benefits sharing to local people, <laughs> local farmers or people who are going to like Nantha? And uh, how do you decide the price of this product, sir, uh, which are grown by farmers? Okay. How they got the benefits sir, from your side? Sir, actually, uh, we are not the people actually who decide the price. It is the market always, who which decide the price of maybe the crude drug or maybe the processed form like oil or maybe the finished products. We help to the farmers by giving the, them the techniques by which they can grow some particular crop. We give the agrotechnologies to the farmers, give them the improved varieties and help them wherever they need. But after having the crop, they have to sell into the market. Definitely, as a, I mean, uh, institute, we combine or we, I mean, help this chain to close, to come together. Like we have the connectivity with the industry who are playing uh, as a middle entrepreneurs, so they take the crop from them, so we connect them to the concerned companies, to the concerned fellow, and then they finally, I mean, they can be used in the Indian market or maybe they may export it. So it is the market which decides the price of the any crop. I think there is uh, no any surety to sell in market. Mm -hmm. you know? We have yeah. lots of problems when we ensure farmer to grow some manpower, then that's extra. Yeah. Uh, if what do they do if there is no uh, marketing or selling mm -hmm. in market? I mean, at that time, like uh, they are going uh, playing with uh, aromatic crop, so we suggest them at least to extract the oil, because oil can be stored for at least for six months. Okay. So, and uh, uh, when there is no buyer, I mean, we suggest the crop only when there is a market. We always ask farmers not to start the farming at very large area. If you have 10 acres of land, better to start with one acre. Okay. So we don't encourage people to replace the food grain also, uh, the food crop also. 
That's why we suggest them to start in between where they are not growing their food crop. So that's why until unless they have their own experience in the market, that who are really the stakeholder, who are the player, because we are the R&D organization, we have the limitation. We can't go everywhere. So in that way, we try to connect the farmers with the industry, but always suggest them to start with, I mean, at a smaller scale, and then whatever experience they have, they can go at the larger scale. Sir, up to some action, I think. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the, your patience listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now it's time for Garam Chai. Uh, I would request all guests to please move towards the arena. Tea is waiting for you. And we will be resuming here by 11.30 in 15 minutes. And I request for all participants to wear uh, the badges. Thank you. Having a tea break of 15 minutes, we will be resuming the session at 11:30. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank
I understood what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. Is that an issue? This is the Dr. here. Yeah, right. Okay, am I audible properly? Yeah, we were told that uh, you want to uh, present yeah, uh, after 12. I, I understood. I understood. But I'm getting my voice now. I'm uh, working from my home. Oh, okay. So that is why I tell you that if it's office, uh, then there is no problem. True. Thank you so much for joining, madam. Yeah, and uh, the screen also I will try to share on that spot. Okay. Sure, sure. I'll take out, uh, tell our technical people, they are going to help you in... Uh, yeah, right, right. So ma'am, will you be sharing the PPT from your side or shall we share the presentation uh, from our side and you will just ask us to change the slides? Uh, with yeah. the way you are comfortable, we'll continue with that. Is it sharing now? Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, your screen has been shared, but from okay. here, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you need to open the PowerPoint presentation. Now okay, we are right, able right. to see the page of MS Teams. Okay, right, right. Just a slide. I just shared the desktop one. Right. Okay.
हेलो तुम की हाँ ना टाइम होते हैं फिर तुम की कौन सा कोई क्या पता है नहीं कि तू बोल दूँगा घूम पाए थे ना Obviously, it's important to know. I ask for sale. मेल करते तो
Hello, uh, all the participants and dignitaries, uh, my sincere request kindly come back to your seats. We are going to resume the uh, startup talk session.
Welcome back everyone. Uh, with the spirit of the session must go on. We are all ready to start our, uh, to continue our next session. I request our Siddhartha sir from here on also to take over the startup session. Thank you sir. So as, as uh, we have promised, this will be an interesting session because we are going to uh, medicinal plant industry as well as what is happening in the ground, ground level. So for this session, I wanted to welcome uh, Dr. We are extremely sorry, there is some technical issue, I will be just restarting the system once. So you, you must have seen the D-glucose on a packet. 
So only uh, D-glucose can be utilized by our human body. So in nature, we have only D-glucose and in amino acids, we have only L-amino acids. So in nature, there's a tendency that only one in a tumor exists in nature. So if we make an I mean, isolated drug from uh, the natural sources, uh, we have a high chances of getting one in tumor. So we do not have the uh, trouble of the other in tumor. So that is one uh, aspect why uh, uh, herbal products are preferred whether for a cosmetic, cosmetic uh, or for a neutral Harvard products should be uh, preferred over the synthetic ones because the isomers, they are really hard to separate and if we have separate, the cost becomes very high. So, so we have to be very careful uh, while taking drugs also and still now the ibuprofen you are taking, it has two enantiomers. <coughs> So coming to my startup, uh, so we are making herbal products. So we are right now, it has been showcased outside uh, one herbal hair that is there, for which uh, patent has been, uh, the, it has been published, and some uh, soap and uh, one uh, black rice shampoo, which is based on our traditional uh, rice shampoo uh, in Manipur. And there's one uh, healing oil, it uh, heals shiorasis also. But then that is a big challenge that uh, I am not marketing it because I am also a, a scientist and before proper certification I cannot uh, commercialize it. So there is one big challenge I have. Uh, because I am in a biodiversity hotspot, it is a very big advantage that I get the raw materials in the vicinity of my factory. But then the certification is a main hurdle. So uh, now I am... Uh, uh, like my firm is two years old and then I have, uh, there's a time that I scaled up but then I have uh, discovered that I have to invest a lot in marketing. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, so it will, uh, it will be something like it will increase the price of my products too. So uh, I mean I'm in that stage, so uh, being a husband, okay, so uh, yeah. So this is the herbal uh, hair dye. So unlike uh, any herbal, uh, unlike uh, other dyes, it won't. It doesn't have ammonia, or it doesn't have uh, the. Uh, I mean uh, the, the full smell of uh, any dye. And uh, uh, on the other hand, it has the good smell of lemongrass oil because uh, this lemongrass is a traditional. Uh, I mean, uh, hair conditioner for uh, people of Manipur, and we have a traditional medicine system, my bro. So it is derived from that. So this has been, uh, the patent has been uh, published, and it is on the verge of getting uh, uh, granted. Grant. So we have two. Uh, that. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is my form, and these are the products I have. Uh, uh, I was uh, showing you, and the, all of this, uh, there are uh, the soap and uh, the rice shampoo, and one more I was talking about, it is the oil, uh, it is uh, extract in olive oil, and it has a capability of healing psoriasis, because there is one component we have extracted, which, will, which has the ability of uh, uh, healing psoriasis. And there are products like incense sticks, which are mosquito repellents, which is made from one traditional uh, herb and uh, lemongrass oil. At this, I give the uh, technology to the self-help groups and elderly women and support them. So these are my products. Uh, and uh, one unique, uh, uh, unique uh, thing about us uh, is that uh, there are many herbal companies, but then uh, our products are patented. Most of them are patented and well researched. And, uh, we cultivate uh, the so, uh, I mean the raw materials, and then the, we have started uh, with a very uh, small investment that is a very uh, lean startup, and uh, we have expertise uh, in uh, uh, with both management and uh, we are, I have a research uh, research experience of more than ten years in natural product chemistry. 
So uh, every time we discuss about the startup, we have to have a problem statement that uh, what a problem my startup is uh, solving. So that is unknowingly uh, certain synthetic components in personal and healthcare products and soap, the shampoo and the dye. They, there are some components which uh, a normal people do not know, but then if you lose, uh, use it for a long time, it will uh, pose uh, I mean, uh, elements and then sodium chloride also. So the people are not aware of this uh, uh, this type of chemicals which are there in the uh, skincare and healthcare products which are used daily. Uh, so there is a question that why my startup is there. Uh, we are there to create awareness of the components in the personal and healthcare products which are harmful to skin and to the overall well, uh, health. And, uh, we have a very uh, simple solution that we make uh, herbal formulations which is uh, deprived, uh, which doesn't have any chemical constitution, uh, constituents. So I want to be very clear about the constituent. Uh, uh, it is a chemical only. Uh, it is the same compound, but uh, the only difference is whether it has come from the synthetic root or it has been extracted from the natural source. So that you have to know. So we are using only compounds which are from natural origin and uh, we extract the compound by most of my products it has to be fermented so that the active component comes out. So this is uh, the simple solution we make for the various elements which uh, one could uh, have uh, if uh, uh, they use the uh, synthetic uh, product. So it's a, some, uh, I, mean, I started with a very low investment so I have my, I have my own uh, com uh, complex, so I didn't invest in much in the infrastructure. So and then uh, my the products I am uh, making now doesn't involve much processing. So I have the, uh, I have invested around uh, 3.4 lakhs and I am generating some revenue now. So I have been supported by the planning department of the startup uh, Manipur. So this is my photo with the uh, CM uh, appraising me because of my. Uh, effort to uh, make a uh, successful startup. So I have uh, 15 uh, direct and partial employees because uh, it's a small firm now, and then we have a capability of production of 3.5 lakh per month. And though I have the advantages of uh, being in a uh, biodiversity hotspot, and I have all the raw materials easily around me. But the challenges are that uh, a lot of uh, lot of investment is so uh, technically I'm sound, but then for the IU certification, there are some uh, uh, I mean norms which I need to uh, comply with for getting the certification. So that is another big uh, challenge for me uh, at this small scale. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it was. Uh, I mean, it was uh, not so difficult because three, year, three years back I was in the same department, they had organized one workshop so, and after that uh, I, uh, I, mean, I took some time and I started my business, in, registered my business in 2020. So I had a lot of mentoring and so I started uh, I mean, quite easily but now at this stage I need, uh, I mean, I need a lot of I mean, more mentoring about the certification and for fundraising and uh, and particular uh, mentoring about the particular products which uh, I think includes in the healthcare section and this is how uh, I mean my firm has uh, evolved in the two years so I think uh, if anybody uh, would like to uh, I mean start a firm uh, it is very I mean for us in Nordic the raw materials are quite available but then the only thing is about the certification uh, which I'm facing now. So that uh, till now I am doing uh, quite good, uh, going really slow and steady, I should say. Then uh, I'm uh, just say a scale, uh, I'm in stage of scaling up. But then I need some uh, fundraising and then the certification. Uh, even uh, people in Ayush, uh, in my state, they are not very clear how to process the certification also. So there is a big hurdle for me at this stage. But then I have uh, got some mentoring help, uh, which I'll be working out. So I'm continuously working out, and uh, I'm still there, along with my uh, job at NIT Manipur as a teacher. 
So this is how I, I started my startup and it's still going on. So once uh, uh, these innovators and others, they are going to talk about their experience, after that probably some uh, you know, pain points or questions would come up. And our panelists here, Dr. Mugeshan and Dr. Yadav, I request them to address uh, if it is possible. And also, I mean, uh, the other delegates and participants are also free to uh, give their comments. So the next uh, person I would like to call is uh, Dr. Rajiv Mili. Uh, he is a senior innovation fellow with the National Innovation Foundation. They have a very deep uh, knowledge about uh, herbal products of uh, or other medicinal plants of Northeast region. They do scouting of grassroots level innovation <coughs> in all the sectors, including medicinal plant sector. So I would request uh, Dr. Rajiv to share some of his experience. Thank I hope I'm quite audible. So good morning everyone. Uh, before we begin, so let me thank you my uh, Siddha, Dr. Siddharji for giving this opportunity. Actually this morning only I am in a, I am told to give my presentation. Actually Dr. Nitin was supposed to present the same but somehow because of some technical glitches, so he could not come. So I got this opportunity. For this, I actually thank both of you, uh, both Dr. Nitin and Siddharthi. So uh, I will be speaking on National Innovation Foundation first three minutes and subsequently what actually we are doing on herbal medicine and subsequently in last part. So I will be taking your question if there is any or we will get your input. First of all, uh, National Innovation Foundation, as you might be aware, that is an autonomous body under Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, whose headquarters is at Gandhinagar, and uh, Nordisk Cell or Guwahati Cell is based at IIT Guwahati, that is a uh, technology complex. So it has uh, four cells. Number uh, the first one, as I said, that is in Guwahati, and second one is at Bhubaneswar, third one is at Dehradun and new cell is coming up there is uh, Jammu and Kashmir. And we have been working uh, on, especially on grassroots innovation and then outstanding traditional knowledge practices. As Sir Sir has rightly said that we have been working on medicinal plant as well. So in notice, in almost four districts of notice, so we have traveled and we have scouted. So what we do here in, the, uh, in our scouting process is we visit to the field, meet the herbal dealers, get their information documented, and thereafter we go for two layers of prior art search, which we call review literature, I guess. And then if we find it something unique, then immediately we uh, uh, we, uh, we go for validations to our partner organizations, if it is a uh, human, health related uh, practices, then immediately we pass it to ICMR and subsequently if that is in agriculture related, then we approach the agriculture universities and colleges and subsequently for uh, veterinary practices, that is we approach uh, the veterinary colleges and other universities related to the subject. And as of now in notice, as I said, we have visited almost all districts in notice, covering uh, all states. And till now, in entire country, we probably the, are the premier agencies covered more than 612 districts in all, uh, all states. And from there, uh, recently we have developed a medicinal uh, a herbal product that is, you can see in our store. The store is just uh, outside, you can see. This is Mostwa for in, uh, mosquito repellent cream. The information actually is scouted from traditional knowledge holder or herbal knowledge holder 
later on the same was tested and then we developed a the product thereafter the same was licensed to the uh, sasat group that is sasat green wellness private limited based at amdavad so this cream was disseminated in three four states in nordis here in assam we have given around uh, 5000 tubes in udalpur district around some 100 tubes in kampokpi and senapati districts of manipur subsequently some uh, 1000 there in south tripura and uh, in orissa pradesh as well and apart from this uh, we have also developed a herbal product that is mastery so mastery is basically for mastitis for treatment of cattle so the technology was transferred to uh, rakesh pharmaceuticals and then thereafter numbers of cookies for biscuits have been developed from the traditional knowledge especially to the, uh, those which are from plant based so after so now question may come we are getting the information or scouting or documenting the information from the those people who are knowledge rich but they are not in the positions to get the patent file or they are not getting financial benefit out of it so question may arise so what exactly we are doing here is after getting documentation once it is uh, confirm the uniqueness or kind of novelty then immediately we go for validation and during the validation itself we file the patent on behalf of the innovators at our cost so the herbal healer or the grassroots innovators on behalf of the innovators by national innovation foundation india then now relating to the technology transfer and all so nif facilitated those technology to be transferred to the uh, different companies or agencies and also the agreement is there so that the fair yeah, so share like the benefit goes yeah. back to the actual yeah. owner so this is why what we actually are doing as of now in notice so i can see many of the yeah, 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 madam uh, jina jina kumar from indom Before this, we have documented the Zylospar longifolia plant from where she developed the herbal soap. So after development of the herbal soap, what we did, we have verified, and then the product was developed, and the technology was transferred to the six group of hotels. So initially, she used to manufacture around like some two to two uh, hundred to three hundred units of a uh, herbal soap but now she uh, improves her uh, product uh, manufacturing up to 1000 to 2000 per day so she is making a good business in manipur at the moment and then we have also uh, filed numbers of patents for those herbal killer traditional knowledge holder from notice and this is what actually we are doing and i also uh, request all the participants please spread this message to your localities areas so that we can approach that you know to come to nif and then people will go and visit them and get the information documented and later on the benefit can be returned back to the actual knowledge holder so with this um, i thank you once again to the organizer for giving this opportunity Actually, I would have come with the chair for presenting some of the presentation, but then anyway, because of the emergency technical places, so if there is any query, I would like to take a question, please. Yes, ma'am. Because 
as well as this they will get immediate support from any other agencies only in this grassroots people they are not getting any sort of help so this is the criteria to me and second educational qualification suppose if it is from science and technology the ground kids should come to go and class well for arts commerce and all they can even have to go for masters and in this end so this is actually our method to support the class of the thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Prasnali. Uh, we heard a startup. We heard a person who is uh, from National Innovation Foundation. So, scouting for traditional knowledge. Now it's time to uh, listen about traditional knowledge holders' point of view. So, I would like to call uh, Mr. Vipu Rodi. from arunachal pradesh who is a, a self motivated person and created a, a good base of uh, traditional knowledge and i will also like to call uh, satyam to assist i think they have a small presentation and he wants to share what he has been doing for last few years in his personal life and now uh, we are trying to uh, give this person a institutional support Probably well, NIF can also be a, a party into that, and also the NFTB and CMAP side we are seeing here. So this is kind of an example we wanted to create, and we want to look forward that such more examples comes. So over to you, Satyam and Gore. so my name is satyam rao and i study from iit gwalior itself so currently i am working in arunachal pradesh under ministry of skill development so there i my work is to fill the gap between the farmers or artisans and the market so with the order of district commissioner we came here so today i introduce you with mr rigu rodi who is doing traditional medicinal plants okay so in upper swansea district mainly three types are there like garo tribe tain tribe and nish tribe so this is the map of upper swansea district in north of pradesh have you ever been in north of pradesh and in central part of north of pradesh so there are so many medicinal plants available so i also want you to come there and take the benefits so this is my app and now i would like to give the sabko mere aur se koti koti karna sabko mere aur se koti koti karna aur main dhoni polo mata hu jai dhoni polo jai dhoni polo jai dhoni polo to maine aaj इस मंच पर पहली बार आया है तो इसके लिए मैं हमारे सत्यम सर को तहे दिलों से शुक्रगुजार हूँ और मेरा सिद्धार्थ साहब जी को भी तहे दिलों से शुक्रगुजार हूँ और उन ये इन दोनों को मैं जिंदगी में मरते दम तक मैं याद करूँगा क्योंकि मैं इसे जंगल का है अंदर में बैठने वाला इंसान है तो मुझको कहां कहां से शांति करके यहां लाया गया यह सत्यम सर जो ने मुझको फोन किया 
सारा इंडिया उनको फोन कर रहा है मैंने यूट्यूब में अपना नाम टाइप करके भेज दिया मैं अपने आप को धोखा दे रहा अपने आप को परेशानी कर रहा सेकंड सेकंड में मिनट मिनट में आपको फोन कर तो मेरे अपना मोबाइल फोन करते रहता है जब इतना तो आपको फोन की इतना फोन किया बाद में फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन टाइम फोन आए तो मैंने सोचा अरे ये तो कुछ जरूरी जरूरी है ये तो फिर मैं फोन रिसीव किया चुना गया तो ऐसे अच्छा एक मैंने प्रोग्राम बताया तो मैंने सोचा था कि आपका तो दुनिया ठीक नहीं है प्यार भी जूता यार भी जूता था हमें ये किया मैं ऐसा नहीं तो हमारे कुछ
मेडिसिन को देखाने से पहले में सबसे अलग जगह ट्रक में जगह है हम लोग का इंसान क्या होता है मेडिसिन खाने के जगह में दारू ले लेता है एल्कोहल ले लेता है मेडिसिन खाने के जगह में तंबाकू बोतल खा लेता है इधर की किसका है अपना का है अपने को धोखा देता है अपने को मारता है तो मेडिसिन को अच्छा से चाहिए फिजर कर सको पेशन करो ना आप फार्मेसी में जाने के जगह में ये मेडिसिन को पेशन करो फिजर कर सको अपना अपना वही समय पास कर सको कितना अच्छा बात है तो गलती किसका है हम लोग का इंसान ही गलती कर सकता है इसलिए ऐसा नहीं करने से अच्छा है ये मेरा एकदम आप सबसे मेरा प्रार्थना है और अभी सर दिखा दीजिए मेडिसिन को ना ज्यादा बात करके भी पैसा नहीं है साथ ही ये मेडिसिन जो है मेरा जंगल में मिलता है ना तकलीफ से मिलता है ये मेडिसिन है हम लोग पहले कैसे कहता है जंगल में मिलता है एक एक करके मिलता है इसको क्या करता है इसका आलू को अस्तमा इसको अस्तमा बीमार होता है ना उसके लिए खिलाया जाता है और इसका फल होता है तो फूल निकलता है ना उसका फूल का जूस निकाल के माता के शिंपू में धोला जाता है लेकिन ये मिलेगा नहीं हम प्रोग्राम में प्रोग्राम आएगा और ये फिर मैं देता हूं मेरा पास में मिलेगा कि ये जगह से मिल गया हम पौधा को फिगर करके रखा है पहले के से मेरा लोकेशन में पहले जैसा कहता है लेकिन इंग्लिश हिंदी में मुझे पता नहीं तो आप लोग का क्या होगा आप और भी जानकारी होगा हमको दे दीजिए बताइए ना और सर ने कैसे बताया नेक्स्ट ये जो है कर्दामों का जाते रहती है ऊपर से निकलता है तो इसको खाने से क्या होगा आपका चोटी का थी और आपका जिसको टीबी हो रहा है उसके लिए बहुत अच्छा राम मान जाता है तो हम लोग इसको पाल के रखते हैं ये जो हम लोग कई से हम लोग नॉलेज ना अपना देखिए तो इसको जाते हैं तो मैं ये जो है मैंने एक दोस्त से ले लिया था तो हम लोग को हमें अवेलेबल नहीं है ये ब्लैक झिंझा है मिलना मुश्किल है तो इसको हम लोग कहाँ में यूज करते हैं जिसको कैंसर जिसको कैंसर पकड़ लिया जिसका लीवर प्रॉब्लम है जिसको लंग प्रॉब्लम है जिसको टीबी हो गया उसके लिए हम लोग इसको इस्तेमाल करते हैं ये ब्लैक झिंझा है अवेलेबल नहीं जिसका ठिकाने के लिए मैं इसको मेरा खुद का बगान है दूसरा से फोटो को लिया है और नेक्स्ट ये ये पौधा को मिलना मुश्किल है जिसको अचानक एक्सीडेंट हो गया पैर फूल गया हाथ फूल गया उसको क्या करना है इसको पीट के बांधना है बांधने से क्या होगा जल्दी से जल्द से जल्द ये रिलीज हो जाएगा ऐसे पौधा है जंगल में मिलता है लेकिन अवेलेबल नहीं है और नेक्स्ट ये जो है मेरा लोकेशन में तालिया पुल कहता है तो और अभी इसको और दिखाएगा तालिया पुल कहता है मेरा लोकेशन में इसका साथ में मैंने अभी एक वीडियो निकलेगा और तादर को कहता है तादर को तादर को जो है दोनों को मिलाएगा और की गुर कहता है वो तीनों को एक साथ खाना है एक महीना खाना है इसको जीरो साइज से लेकर के आपका मीडियम साइज तो जितना भी गोल बराबर कितनी स्टोन हट जाएगा आपको ऑपरेशन करने का कोई जरूरी नहीं है और ये पौधा को खाएगा जो जो पेशाब करने में यूरिन करने में यूरिन प्रॉब्लम है ड्रॉप ड्रॉप यूरिन निकालता है इसको खाने से इलाज हो जाएगा ये बहुत अच्छा एक औषधि है इसको पाल के रखते हैं और दूसरा क्या क्या मेडिसिन आपको जानता नहीं आपको भी जानने से पता नहीं और यही तादर और यही है जहाँ आपने इसे दिखाया है ना इसको हम लोग तादर को कहता है यानी कि आठ भुआ का जूस इसको जीव के कारण कितनी का भी रामा निभा है ये कितने के लिए बहुत अच्छा औषधि है और नेक्स्ट ये कुमरो इसका लिए मेरा दिमाग काट दिया है सारा इंडिया फोन किया है हमको ढाल दूसरा काम भी सीख इतना ही जो दवाई दिया 
इलाज नहीं है तो हमको मरने के लिए तय हो रहा है वो इलाज में तो मेरा दिमाग बढ़ती जाए तो हम कहना हो रहा है वो मुफ्त तो पाएगा तो तुम बोलेगा हमको नहीं पाने के लिए बोल रहा बोला तो आप उसको चुप के हम जंगल में जाके बिठो ना हमको मिठो नहीं बोले तो मिठो मुझे जाने दे जंगल में लेकर हम पता को जा रहे शायद वो मेरा टॉयलेट में पूरा मेरा जितना फूक है अंदर जितना बैक्टीरिया है वो आठ और वार में क्या वो सब तो मर के निकल तो मैंने इतना अच्छा लगा है हमको कहे कुछ साइड इफेक्ट नहीं बहुत अच्छा बात है तो और भी कहे और भी कहे तो मेरा डिस्टिंग भी रिलीव होने लगा डॉक्टर ने कहा आपने आपको मेरा तीन जगह मेरा काम था तीन जगह में दो मेरा खून को निकला था एक जगह पर ठीक कर दिया था तो डॉक्टर ने कहा था कि हमको आपको खास के ऑपरेशन करना है तो हम गरीब इंसान ने कोई ऑपरेशन को करता है नहीं हम नहीं करे होंगे ये ऑपरेशन को ये पौधा की उम्रों को मैं एक महीना कार्य करें एक महीना कार्य करें मेरा इंसान कर मैं मेरा कैटिशियन में जाके वो भी हो गए और पीछे से वहाँ भी जाके मैं इंसान को दिख गया तो लाइफ बिल्कुल हार गया आज वो आज तुम्हारा तो व्यक्ति का था लेकिन इसी के लिए आपका अच्छा हो गया ऐसे हो गया आपको ये तब से मैं ये तो मैं विश्वास है इसको जो पता कुछ उसी काले वाला इंडिया में कोई कोई काया होगा लेकिन इसका तीन ब्रांड काले वाला पहली बार अभी जब आपने आज तक कोई कोई काया होगा पता कुछ उसी काया था लेकिन इसी को ब्रांड को काले वाला अभी तक आपने ये इसका इलाज जो है इसको काट कर देना जिसको ये कुछ भी बोल दो क्या हो जाएगा तो � मोकाम दाल की तमाम इंद्रियां इसी है बेंजी पर आम आदमी जाने इसके साथ में एक लोकन एक चीज और तीन पता लगाने के लिए आपका बेंजी का बेंजी इसका एक चीज इसके साथ साथ चीज होता है वो चीज है ये जो है पाइप का इलाज है पाइप में पाइप का लेकिन ये हम पाइप में यूज़ करते हैं पापड़ों में गोरों के
Yes, yes. so much uh, there is again a small change uh, we will include in this session itself dr ed avashri who is the director of research and development of spine board the reason uh, for including her because she is going to talk about uh, the spine board's initiative that is promoting this uh, very sensitive important spine and what kind of infrastructure support research support and uh, Their uh, community board is giving. She is going to share. So I would like to welcome Dr. Ishita Mushi, Director of Research and Development Science Board. Uh, she is from my. Okay. 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 Okay.
para nós, né? No one the slide has not been shared. No, no, no. We need this microphone. We need this microphone. When your screen is visible, you need to start the presentation. No. At the bottom of this. This is not our problem. And now the slides are visible. We need to click on the slides. Just click on the uh, and on the bottom of the screen there's a symbol of uh, to share the to make it into slideshow. Just on the slide of uh, landing of slice what is visible to us.
Yes, yes. Yeah. 
nothing else. Yes, sir.
point of one example, uh, you know that we see that it's growing in a lot of states in a very large quantity, and the large producer uh, is from a lot of states, and in which uh, the, by valuation, the percentage that market increases in the uh, sector. When it's price, we are getting only 45 rupees. When the value step by step is increasing, the percentage of uh, uh, the rupees per kg is increasing. And also, product cost also increasing, as well as margin is also increasing. When you sell it as a drop, you will get this much margin, but when it goes out the product, you will get a value added product, the profit is increasing. Very drastic. Uh, so instead of uh, doing product uh, area business, you just make the primary processing up to packaging, everybody can do try the whole package. But these two are higher than So powdering, up to powdering, any of your can do. So like that, all the personal and prices can be uh, made into value added product for much profit and benefit. With this, I'll stop my slide. And if you have any doubt, we have an office that you can go to the office and the program is here. And we are now at the end of the day. And we are now at the end of the day. And we are now at the end of the day. And we are now at the end of the day. And we are now at the end of the day. And we are now at the end of the day. Thank you so much, madam, for your uh, insight. And I'm pretty sure that uh, many of our participants and uh, delegates, they will have a uh, you know, uh, chance to get a look at size board and further extend this activity, which will help this medicinal plant sector. Even from our school side, really, we are going to have uh, some formal collaboration soon with size board so that. Uh, we can extend the services from Slice Board to its actual beneficiary. Thank you so much, Sharon, for joining this session. So, we will conclude this session with a uh, concluding talk by the conclusion. Sir, please come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just one small uh, announcement. This poster evaluation is going on. Those who are uh, uh, presenting in poster section, you can proceed to your uh, poster area. Thank you.
Being this, this is more than this is around 60 GB, but my seat I will get full. For now, it's for now, it will be okay. So this is a, a, a statistic. 
and 15,500 liters per day and 6,500 liters of algae has already imported. So this species there is still uh, many of the species are also used in the very self sectors for preparation of different formulations. So uh, diverse, uh, if you go through the diversity status, you can see there are common and uh, rare and endangered and endangered plants. What is the other plants? The native plants of Tanzania, for example, to the western plants, and the Tulagi is like that, for the native species. So you can, you can, you can, uh, you can see the utilization. Yeah, it is. 
with a collection of materials and it goes to identification and digitization and clinical research it goes to then research. These are some of the uh, outline. And theme of the drug standardization, you can see procurement of products, development of SOP standard operating procedures, scientific validation and monograph, then for, you know, whatever it is, which are IOS as it's done, different pharmacopoeias. So when we when we go to identifications, we face some of the problems. How we can identify the plants? Habit, habitat, flower, these are the characters. With all these characters, even small uh, aroma and anatomical characters. But still we have facing for there are adaptation as that. If you are a fresh plant, you can easily identify. But if, if, if it is a raw material, if it is a dry plant, how you can identify? So there is there is a, there is a uh, separate section already you know that pharmacognosy. So all the adulteration, these are also issues facing the rather uh, medical issues. Adulterations, we need a good laboratory fix, uh, infrastructure, we need high quality, availability, cost of raw drugs, these all are uh, some of the issues in the uh, raw drugs uh, sector. I can see the three plants are there. This is a uh, uh, Piper Nigram is there, Papaya plants are glorious as super well. Yeah, that seeds are uh, some, uh, it is a four o'clock plant. So, one. so all if it is mixed together, you, can, you, can, you can't be able to, miraculous jalapa, this plant. So if you all, the seeds are mixed together, it is very difficult to identify. These are all the adaptation, it is one of the very big uh, problem in the rabbits. Now you can see this is a rather issues for uh, this is a, both of uh, this is Arjuna Mexicana and another one is for our Sassum seeds, Brasica nigra. But if you mix it together, it's very difficult to identify. Now you can see the another plant, it's Berberis and it's Magonia. The parts both are uh, yellow color only. If mixed it together, it's, it's very difficult to identify. Then now we can identify. I will come to the next slides. See, this is the seeds of uh, Abras and this is for Pavonia water. If mixed together, we cannot identify. Now I come to the uh, some of the specialized characters. Each plant has some specialized characters. You can see the some medium. It has some uh, juices of calcium crystals. So this is with this we can identify. Sumukuna so, prurians. It has some uh, dumb cell shape, osteoclerites. It is uh, it's, so. Whenever you do the pharmacology, uh, please find out the specialized characters. That, that is the identification of that plant. It's for Miraculous, uh, sorry, Mystica fragrance. It has some blood like proteins. We can identify. Asparagus racemosus. It has endosperm cells with plasmodus meta. So that we can identify asparagus. Even even the dry material. If you study the pharmacology easily, we can identify. See, this is for uh, 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 Zira Zira, not Caram Caram. So this also it has some picture to its clear cells. You can see some of the other pollen grains. Now we can see these trichomes, leaf, leaf trichomes, different shapes and all. This is uh, pollen grains, shape and uh, different shapes and size. These are all some of the other uh, studies. So we have published some of the books also in different uh, studies regions. For our area. So, so there are a lot of documentation and 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 uh, uh, has been uh, already done. So now we have to, the students we have to come forward to evaluate it, make it a clinical studies, go through the literature and go for the clinical studies. That is very important. And 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 uh, it, it actually. Uh, this is for my conclusion. So, whatever the studies, whatever the students, you can you can explore, start your studies in a small scale level because many of the small things can change uh, big things, make big things. Because even 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 for the small earthworm, it become uh, vermicompost. It comes from a small earthworm. Like that, a lot of many of the things. So. Please, uh, you can you can start your work and and, and uh, dedicate it with your dedication and hard work. Definitely, you can succeed. Do, do your work uh, for smarter, not harder. So this is for my conclusion, and 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 I will uh, uh, give my thanks to the uh, Siddharth and uh, Green uh, uh, for. Uh,
their uh, uh, opportunity to share my knowledge and all. Uh, this is the concluding, and I will go for uh, the concluding remarks of uh, today's program. Uh, so today we have the startup program. Why I presented this another you can you can be able to see number of medicinal plant and formulations. Now the, today they have come for uh, herbal hair day, one number one product. So very very much needed because even even youngsters to even old people say the hair day is uh, everywhere. So one of the important uh, product in the cosmetics. Then then uh, for uh, uh, psoriasis, some health uh, for skin disorders, some oil has been uh, developed. And, and one person came for mosquito repellents because you can see that many of the diseases from dengue or malaria it comes from mosquito. But this is a very good product for mosquito repellent. And 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 you can you can see some other uh, oil based plants and some of the uh, find out some other asthma for uh, some product from asthma. They have one person is uh, developed something jaundice. So these are what, why I want to say is now I actually today I'm very happy because at least the public, the farmers to come forward this much of awareness. In the earlier days, uh, uh, the, the awareness was very poor. Now also in some part of the country, uh, the awareness was very very poor because uh, once I was uh, in giving lecture, uh, a yeah, full of uh, cell group uh, uh, ladies and gents was there. Just I asked for two questions. I asked first, how many of you have uh, eucalyptus oil at your home? Okay, so there was hundred of people. Only few they raised their hands. Only few raised. Sir, we have eucalyptus. Uh, uh, we used for some uh, headache or cough or something. Then I like the second question. I asked, how many of you have uh, fair and lovely face cream at your home? Almost all. Uh, <laughs> including gents, they rise there. And so, what, why I am telling uh, the cosmetic products uh, reaches very easily to the public, not uh, medicinal products. So, we have to make the awareness. Awareness is very important among the publics. So, once we got the information, it should be for, uh, transferred to the farmers. So, this is what my request and, uh, and this awareness to be created in the farm level, village level, layman level, so that the medicinal products can be utilized as per the right direction. So I conclude uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam's one uh, quote. Actually, what happened? Once uh, question was asked of Dr. Abdul Kalam, a former uh, uh, president of India, who made path from Rameswaram to Rashtrapati Bhavan. Okay. So how we can measure a success of a program? How we, we can measure a success of a scheme, a success of a seminar or conferences? He has very beautifully has explained the benefit of the program, uh, the benefit of the uh, uh, schemes, uh, the benefit of the seminars, uh, research. When the day it reaches to the common man, when the day it reaches to the a person in the corner of the village, when it reaches the day, the tribal man in the forest. That day only their scheme or uh, program or any uh, for, uh, seminar, conference that gets the success. So what I want to convey is, the beam, uh, today we are conducting this BIMSTEC uh, Industries Related Medicine Plans Opportunities uh, Seminar. I hope the two days uh, deliberations will reach the public and definitely the day will, they will uh, get the benefit out of the, these uh, programs because many uh, new interventions also we have discussed. So definitely the day will come that will be uh, measure the success of this program. With this I conclude. I express my sincere thanks to uh, Siddharth and uh, Green Webular uh, Foundations for uh, organizing a wonderful seminar in these days. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your profound, profound knowledge and your session was full of valuable information. It was a pleasure listening to you. And your words of encouragement will always support them into untiring productive actions impacting the social and national fabric through it. Now, this is uh, time for lunch. Before that, there is a small announcement.
due to uh, time constraint, we are going to make technical session 5 and technical se session 6. And uh, offline presentations, offline oral presentations will be conducted here. And uh, online oral presentations will be conducted at hall number 4. And, and there is a uh, break. Uh, we will uh, resume here the program by 2.30. I request all participants to keep your uh, jet, uh, badges. And this is time for lunch. Please have. अपना मोटर किया था। मोटर का था तो कॉक्सल। ये तो अपना मोटर का था ये। ये तो अपना बड़ा बड़ा का था ये कॉक्सल।
डिस्कवरी ऑफ एंटी मलेरिया प्लांट इज नॉट लेस देन चंद्रमा का खोज एंड मंगल ग्रह का दिस इज आवर इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज व्हिच हैज क्रिएटेड एडवेंचर इन साइंस जिसको हम कहते हैं पेरू के दिवाइट वाले मां पेरू राजा वाज सिनकोना एंड फर्स्ट एंटी मलेरिया प्लांट इज सिनकोना स्पेसिफिक एपिथेट ऑफिसिनेलिस लॉन्ग यूज इन फार्माकोपिया देन ऑफिसिनेलिस स्पेसिफिक एपिथेट तो सी दिस इज द इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज एंड दिस हैज यू सी हाउ सेट सिविलाइजेशन तो बिकॉज ऑफ सच यू सी प्रॉपर्टीज इवन टुडे आवर इथोनोमेडिसिनल प्लांट्स आर यू सी लाइक्ड बाय 80% पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड देयर आर मेनी प्लांट्स लाइक इन वेस्टर्न घाट दिस प्लांट ट्राइकोपस एजिलेनिकस व्हाट हैपेंस कि द ट्राइब ऑफ ट्राइकोपस एजिलेनिकस ईट दिस प्लांट उनकी थकान कम हो जाती है वो फ्रॉम टाइड टू वन टाइड ऐसा पौधा कि कॉन्फ्रेंस में बैठे हुए हैं थक जा रहे हैं इस पौधे को कहेंगे थकान कम हो जाएगी तो सच टाइप ऑफ फार्मूलेशंस दैट वाज पेटेंटेड बाय एक्स डायरेक्टर एंड पीआर आई डॉक्टर पुष्पांगद तो सच टाइप ऑफ यू सी नॉवल फार्मूलेशंस इज स्टिल रिपोर्टेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ आवर इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस 80% पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दे आर बिहाइंड द यूज ऑफ हर्बल प्रोडक्ट्स केवल बार्डर प्रॉब्लम से दो देशों की लड़ाई होती है ये बात नहीं है वी हैव सच टाइप ऑफ नॉलेज ऑन द प्लांट्स मेडिसिनल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द प्लांट्स पर्टिकुलरली इन इंडिया कि मेनी कंट्रीज फाइट फॉर दोज प्लांट्स लाइक स्पाइसेस आपको मालूम होगा कि अट्रैक्टेड टुवर्ड्स आवर स्पाइसेस पुर्तगालीज केम टू इंडिया दे एस्टैब्लिश देयर कॉलोनी हां ये हल्ला था इंडिया के प्लांट के बारे में देन पांडिचेरी में फ्रेंच पीपल केम पुर्तगाली जन फ्रेंच फाट टुगेदर दिस इज आवर इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज कि ऑल आवर इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज टू कंट्रीज फाट देन ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी केम तो दिस इज यू सी दिस इज इंडिया क्रेडिट गोस टू इंडिया कि वी हैव सच टाइप ऑफ प्लांट्स व्हिच अट्रैक्टेड मेनी दस 15 मिनट में खत्म कर देंगे हां प्लीज कंटिन्यू हां कि मेनी कंट्रीज दे फाट टुगेदर एंड इट इज टेस्टेड ड्यूरिंग कोरोना पीरियड कि व्हेन देयर वाज नो वैक्सीन नो मेडिसिन दिस स्पाइसेस दे बूस्ट अप आवर इम्यूनिटी मेनी ऑफ दिस स्पाइसेस लाइक एंड्रोग्रेफिस पेनिकुलेटा जिंजर हल्दी दे वर ट्रेडिशनली यूज्ड एज एंटीवायरल प्लांट्स एंड वी डिपेंडेड ऑन दिस प्लांट्स एंड दे प्रोटेक्टेड लाइफ्स ऑफ इंडियन पीपल सो यू सी बिकॉज ऑफ दिस our ethnomedicinal knowledge is still exists now i shall come to second thrust of my lecture ki what is the position of india in the field of ethnomedicine or in the field of medicinal plants there are 17 mega biodiversity rich countries india is one of them and we have four hot spots of biodiversity hain eh? hum log jante ho india kya hai we are knowing about bentham and hooker system of classification naam suna hoga bentham hooker they belong to big botanical garden royal botanical garden england and they thought to propose a system of classification jiska ki pure world mein recognition ho karte apne england ke paudhon par in in england the total flora is less than 700 species whole europe flora europea is written by turil less than 1300 species kar hi nahi ho pate they were bound to go to two different countries where there were diversity and bentham went to australia he went he wrote flora australiensis and hooker came to india poor eastern bharat ka north east ka particularly ghoda par chad kar ke usne paudhon ka survey kiya kyun hooker came to india china chala gaya hota india hi kyun aaya dekhiye apne country ka hai position ki because in the world there are eight biomes there are 16 biogeographic geographical zones and in our country all the eight biomes exist all the 16 biogeographical zones they exist in india we have black soil we have let rice soil we have desert flora we have mangrove flora we have loamy soil upper gangetic plain and we have alpine atmosphere at himalaya and amongst the 9000 plant species 3000 plant species of himalaya they are having medicinal property because all the geographical zones they meet at himalaya and the stress is created because of this 
valuable lives have been secondary metabolites are found in the plants of Himalaya. Therefore, the plants of Himalaya, almost all the plants of Himalaya, they are medicinally important. And in the global herbal market, amongst the 10 top demanded raw materials, nine raw materials are found in India. No, our country me pay jate hain. This is the position of India in herbal raw materials or ethno medicinal knowledge. And 44 percent, dekhiye, amongst the 17 biodiversity, uh, mega biodiversity uh, countries, maybe India on the sixth or seventh position. But 44% plants of India, they are not medicinally important. This is, you see, this is the you see, position of India. And even our underutilized plants, Chodiya Grautia Serpentina, and Vidalia Sunifera, underutilized plants, this Kala Joha rice, that is medicinally important. Basmati rice, Kala Joha rice, in Basmati rice, this aromatic component is found. And in Kala Joha rice also, this is found our system, but in Pala Joha rice, there is omega-6 fatty acid and omega-3 fatty acid in appropriate ratio 6 into 1, which is where we get it, it is where we get it, which is where we get it, which is where we get it, and which is very much beneficial for our low blood pressure as well as high blood pressure. I wanted to say, even our underutilized flora, that is on demand. And traditionally, this was used. The same case of the band, 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 from you see south to uh, Himalaya, there are many types of medicinally important plant. We have somras kisi ko hum karte hain. Hum ne hume nahi pata somras kya hai. Lekin hum sochte hain ki this is the mushroom, jisme ki ibotenic genic acid paya jata hai and that is hallucinogenic. So such India mein kya hai? Such type of plants are here reported. And this is our ethno medicinal knowledge. Many plants they remove the stones, kidney stones. हम जानते हैं इन सब चीजों को and the elite chemo type, elite chemo type means विधानिया सोनी फेरा को हाथी में भी है, लेकिन नागौर में, राजस्थान में उसकी फिकेसी वहाँ के राम मटेरियल में ज्यादा होती है. This is the geographical region. And such type of plant, such type of species is known as elite chemo type. So elite chemo type is found in Almora. This is the plant. जब जब pandemic आता है एक एक हमारे हर पर राम मटेरियल्स का इम्पोर्टेंस बढ़ जाता है। कोई वैक्सीन नहीं थी, कोरोना का आया भी पहला स्ट्रेन। We depended on this plant. This is you see, you know, इस्पोरा काटी फोरिया सब को मालूम है, किलोए के बारे में मालूम है। हाँ, it is all set in Ayurveda. There are two types of you see, major aims. पहले रसायन, aphrodisiac plant and बुद्धि रसायन, intellect promoting plants. This is a prodisic plant, it is used as liver tonic and it is also used as a heart tonic. And Bhav Prakash Nighandu, we all know the Ayurveda people. Bhav Prakash Nighandu has been written in Sanskrit. That this plant is a bio-enhancer and it has been written in Amrita. With this Tino is a polyphilia. It is known as Amrita. Why do it have to be Amrita? The Guru is still alive, the Guru is still alive. अमृता के भाव प्रकाश में घंटू में लिखा गया है उसको इस उसको को तो हम नहीं पढ़ेंगे लेकिन दो मिनट में उसको हम बता दें आपको जब राम रावण की लड़ाई हुई थी विजया दशमी के दिन रावण मारा गया तो क्या हुआ ऊपर से देवता लोग आए और रामचंद्र जी को कहे गॉड लैंडिंग यू आर मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम आपने रावण को मार दिया एक ही बदलती है इसमें तो राम ने कहा कि आई एम नाट मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम लक्ष्मण तीन घंटा सोया था केवल बोल नहीं रहा था तो हम पहाड़ से दवा मंगा दिए एंड सो मेनी पानर भालू दे आर किल्ड हैं तो हाउ देर सिस्टर विल सेलेब्रेट रक्षा बंधन एंड वाइफ विल सेलेब्रेट करवा चौथ एंड तीज व्रत आई एम नाट मैं उसी मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम उन्होंने इंद्र से कहा कि हमारे तरफ के सारे पानरों को जिंदा कर दीजिए लिखा हुआ है हमने आपको कहा कि थोड़ा मेडिसिन पर जब बात करनी है तो हमको अपने ओल्ड लिटरेचर को टर्न अप करना पड़ेगा रामचरित मानस में लिखा हुआ है सुन सुन पति का प्रभाव हमारे परे भूमि निश्चरण जमारे ममहित लाग तजेनी जप्राणा त्यही त्याव सुरेश सुजाना सुरेश 
लक्ष्मण इंद्र सुधा परस सुधा मन अमृत सुधा परस कपि भाग जिलाए सुखी भय प्रभु पर फूल पाए ऊपर से इंद्र अमृत की प्रसाद किए पानर भालू चिंता हो गए चिंता होने के बाद अपना रीप और थके मनाने लगे उनके शरीर से जहां जहां अमृत गिरा तीनों इस पूरा कार्य फोलिया पैदा हो गया ये इसमें लिखा हुआ है तो बिकाज आप दिस दिस तीनों इस पूरा कार्य फोलिया इज नोन एज अमृता एंड ड्यूरिंग द कोरोना पीरियड दिस तीनों इस पूरा कार्य फोलिया वर्क्ड एज अमृता इन सेविंग द लाइफ ऑफ आवर लाइफ There are many types of plants in Hyderabad. Me, Gayuluma, Gayuluma. This plant of Escalopidaceae, Hyderabad, me grow. करता है. लोग इसकी चटनी बना करके खाते हैं. लेकिन क्या है? इसका फार कपड़े में इस राउलपिया सरपंचाइना को बांध करके ले गए थे. ब्रश करने के दातुन करने के बाद इसी को खा लेते थे. खाने के बाद क्या हुआ? Tranquilizer like activity. कौन अंग्रेज आया कौन गया इस तरह से किंग कर्तव्य की मूड इसको करते हैं ट्रम टूलाइजर लाइक एक्टिविटी तो सच टाइप ऑफ प्लान सच टाइप ऑफ इथनो मेडिसिनल नॉलेज एग्जिस्ट इन आवर कंट्री एंड दिस दे इन फॉर द लेडीज गाइनेकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम्स टू टाइप टू प्लांट्स वुड फोडिया एंड दिस सराका वर सराका सारा वाज द नेम ऑफ द वाइफ ऑफ लिनियस लिनियस के वाइफ का सारा नाम था बिकॉज ऑफ दिस This plant is named Saraka, and the bark is still used. No resistance development among microorganisms. Very safe. Take with milk or water. So such type of plants against diabetic. This plant. Hey, why the biodiversity? India is a biodiversity rich country. Friends, earlier, our whole we have told that the whole our bhumandal is two places connected. One is Laosia connection, and another one. हमारे नीम के साथ हुआ। There are so many examples of this biopiracy 
It is plant sada bahar is native to Mauritius. This is native to Mauritius. Uh, Madagascar. Or illegally formed visited Madagascar. Its anti-diabetic property ko dekha. Two minor components, wind blasting and wind twisting, usko kia. And that is used against Hodgkin cancer disease. This is important example of biopiracy. Or this plant pentadepletia bresiensis. 500 times more sweetener than sugar Africa mein paya jata hai. Iske mithas, iske mithas wale jeen ko patent kara liya gaya. So, dekhiye, kya example hai ki hum log jaise rich hai biodiversity mein. Hai, amara traditional knowledge hai. Isko humko bachana padega biopiracy se. Ye sab examples hai. Neen mein humne 5000 crore kharch karke kisi tarah se uska case ko jeeta. Aur this is plant, kalahari desert mein paya jata hai. Rudia kontronai, jo ki appetite suppressor plants. Navik use karte hai. The appetite suppressor gene is illegally patented by others. So this is example of biopiracy. This is you see a bean and this is Colorado based company has patented it slightly changing the color of the bean. So such type of you see cases of biopiracy we are experiencing developing countries uh, who are mega biodiversity rich country. Our jamun ko China ne pura uska genome sequencing kara liya dekhiye. So these are what we have to do. We have to bioprospect our bio resources. This is the need. Ki India should have bio prospect our traditional knowledge. And for this, CSIR has developed traditional knowledge digital library. This is the option for India. Yet this is the fourth AXUC thrust of my lecture. Traditional knowledge digital library in February 2009, 9 February 2009, translating most of the traditional knowledge in English, German, French, Japanese, and Spanish. And this has you checked many cases of biopiracy of India and other countries have also, you see, eh, appreciated our act. The second one, ethnomedicinal knowledge hai. We are losing our environmental ethics. Peer ko jab chaho kaat do, pahle kya tha? Peer ke paas jate the, prasna karte the, om deva abno jas viswa bhunwa visesa, jao usse desu so panas patesu dasme jevai namo nama. Hey, lekin aaj ham lo, the environmental ethics we are losing because of this many of our ethnomedicinal plants they are going to be destroyed. Tisra kya hai ki we should correlate climate change ki baat hai. Climate change mein hum dekhte hai 1 degree centigrade temperature baha to kya hua wheat ka paidawar kam ho jayega ki jada ho jayega. Lekin Ayurveda mein hum aise nahi kar rahe hai ki agar 1 degree centigrade temperature baha तो हमारे मेडिसिनल प्लांट के एक्टिव प्रिंसिपल पर क्या असर पड़ेगा अगर वो कम हो तब भी जो आयुर्वेद में डोज मेंशनड है अल्टर करेगा ज्यादा हो तब भी वो डोज अल्टर करेगा तो दिस इज यू सी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग व्हिच यू शुड डू कि वी शुड माने ट्राई टू नो इफेक्ट ऑफ राइजिंग टेंपरेचर क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑन आवर आयुर्वेदिक नॉलेज इसको हमको करना है एंड we should also, जैसे देखो ये नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी है नैनो बेस्ट ड्रग बन रहे हैं जिससे उसकी इफिकेसी बढ़ जाए आवर इथोनोमेडिसनली प्लांट्स दे शुड बी ऑल्सो हैविंग नैनो फार्मुलेशन जिससे कि वो हमारे इफिकेसी तो भी है लिंक दिस इथोनोमेडिसनल नॉलेज विद मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी जिससे कि हमारे प्रोडक्ट्स इफिकेसियस हो एंड देर आर मेनी एग्जाम्पल्स टाइम कम है है नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी मेक इन इंडिया प्रोग्राम जब बना तो लोग ये सोचे कि दिस मेक इन इंडिया प्रोग्राम इज ओनली फॉर कंप्यूटर साइंस इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड ऑल दिस बट फ्रेंड्स एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस आर पिलर ऑफ ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन और हमने जो बात आपको कहा कि सो मेनी फार्मास्यूटिकल प्रोडक्ट्स दे आर लाइफ सेविंग एंड इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज और इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज may be an important component of making India campaign of our Prime Minister. Or dusra kya hai? Corona bhi hamaar sa competition hai China ka. Lekin Corona mein kya hua? There is a passive in different countries with China. So they are looking towards India. Apna company yaha sthapit kar rahe hai. 9% hamaara export. Tisi kohan kohata hai aapada mein ausar. Tis samay hamaare paas ausar hai. Or is par hamko concentrate karna chahiye. Bimari nahi aati hai. हमारे पास इंतजाम रहता है डेंगू अब आया प्लेटलेट कम हुआ पपीता बहुत पहले से था यह है देखिए इथोनोमेडिसिनल नॉलेज 
बीमारी आई हमारे पास पौधा था है तो यू सी दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ टाइम कम है इथनो मेडिसिनल नॉलेज तो हमको करना क्या है हमारी जी नीचे जा रही है ठीक है संजूनी पूटी जैसे हम ऐसा कोई फार्मूलेशन नहीं बना पाएंगे पता नहीं हो क्या था भाई देखो वो तो देखा नहीं है कोई अपने इथनो मेडिसिनल नॉलेज के आधार पर कोई ऐसा हम प्रोडक्ट बनाए जिसका इंटरनेशनल पेटेंट हो इंटरनेशनल डिमांड हो एंड दिस आवर इथनो मेडिसिनल नॉलेज विल इनहांस आवर जी टी पी इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ आवर कंट्री थिंक लोकली एक्ट ग्लोबली दिस वॉज दीम ऑफ माई लेक्चर be vocal or local to make india a self reliance country friends this is our and there are many products jaise kai bane hue hain to this was my lecture thank you very much geeta mein shri krishna ne kaha hai jada jada hi dharma se agra nirbhoti bharat abhyutthana ma dharma se tadatmanam sirjamya unhone kaha hai ki ghabrana mat jab jab dharti par badmas aate hain main kisi na kisi roop mein अपना अवतार लेता हूं ऊपर से धनवंतरी कह रहे हैं अरे पृथ्वी वासियों घबराना मत जब जब नई नई बीमारियों की अनुभूति हो तो हमारे प्लांट बायोडाइवर्सिटी के तरफ देखना मैं ऐसे ऐसे पौधों को दिया हूं कि उन नई नई बीमारियों को भी दूर करेगा थैंक यू वेरी मच for your inspiring words we are thrilled to know about our long lived heritage we have uh, cherished since years now i would request dr r k sharma to enlighten us with his knowledge and share his part
good of him. First of all, uh, I'm very much thankful for Dr. Siddharth to invite me as a speaker. Basically, I am a professor. Uh, in Ayurveda. My specialization is uh, pharmaceutics. Uh, last few years I am working as a principal of Government IOD College. Uh, but simultaneously I am just holding the, some other responsibilities, especially Government of Assam as a drug licensing authority. That is uh, licensing of ASU drugs. Uh, there is around 60 number Ayurvedic manufacturing company, mm -hmm. which is actually need to be evaluated as well as uh, the licensing part. Actually, I am just monitoring. Uh, today, our topic is. The scope of medicinal plant based therapy and research in Northeast India. The Northeast region is comprised the eight states. A number of underutilized minor edible foods have been identified in Manipur. The therapeutic application of 40 plants represented 29 genera. 23 families use this medicinal plant. I want to concentrate with Northeast States value. The upward trend in the export of medicinal and aromatic plants products in the recent years has prompted both government and private sector. Dr. Dubey, he has mentioned various ethnobotany topics, especially he has emphasized the Ayurveda. But if you go through, then you will see the elucidation of the selected aromatic and medicinal plant, where we are based on this and the traditional medicinal plant species of Assam. If you concentrate, then you will see right from Terminalia to many species which I have mentioned here there is a varieties of Garcinia which is very endemic to this region. There is some medicinal plant which is I want to highlight here. These medicinal plants not only in the vegetable origin, this is this having the medicinal values too. And nowadays you know the use of the antibiotic and various drug components, especially the synthetic drugs, people turn to the heart. Especially in the pandemic period, we are experienced. The people they choose to just do their immunity, protect their immunity and become more healthy. So these are some plants where the various medicinal values we want to show. I want to share the slide and not go details of. Now, herbalists are common in every state, especially in Northeast India. We have seen there are some people they acquired extensive knowledge or technique, but do not typically possess occult power. They are expected to diagnose and prescribe medicine for everyday ailment and illness to prevent and to alleviate misfortune or agony. So, if you see these herbalists, diviners, traditional birth attendants, then you'll see the many herbs or Dubesar has directly mentioned that there is many drugs which we have used long back as well as our ancestors. 
urban semi urban communities they have also exposed them with various preparation so i want to show some the state wise status of folklore medicine plants used for prominent disease why i have just collected this in the table form as because you see the drugs from wild source we are dependent from home garden and some other food drugs of we are getting very less number so details numbers of the plants there is a survey that is in arunachal pradesh assam and the eight states you will get various disease related in child care gynecological disorder diabetes the stomach trouble these are the common plants they have used by the herbalist diviners and other some of the priority species for traditionally healing practices in northeast india we have listed here in the various state the growing use of herbal medicine issues relating the adverse reaction again this is a very important thing we are come across in our hospital that how the medicinal products and supplements has increased tremendously over the past three decades with not less than 80% of the people's worldwide relying which is already mentioned but many of them remain the old mentioned just not even mentioned and the agent zones promising potential herbs and this efficacy that to be evaluated so for evaluation these are the factor responsible to patronize the self medication with herbal medicine the recent research has public interest herbal remedies has been attributed to several factors that is various claims on efficacy effectiveness of plant medicine preference of consumers for natural therapies anonymous belief dissatisfaction with the pharmaceuticals and orthodox preparations then high cost side effect patient belief these are the things why the people they are turned for the medicinal plant and using the medicinal plant tremendously influence and regulatory policies on safety of herbal medicine so the my part is that there is some regulatory part and policies especially for safety of this herbal medicine which is come under drug and cosmetic act being a drug licensing authority actually uh, we have to enforce those things as well as the general people they don't have the proper idea as well as awareness to use of these herbs so that's why the people they sometimes suffer a lot with the unsafe use of these herbs as well as may not be with high dose of medicinal plant there is some delicate organ hence the safety and traditional and herbal medicine has therefore become a major concern in not in the health hazard as well as national authorities and for general public we should give proper attention to see the safety period part there is a pharmaco vigilance especially in ayush drug a pharmaco vigilance in every state it is working by the various organization as well as especially ministry ayush they have developed some center in various institute where we are dealing the patient the current scenario of ayurvedic manufacturing unit in assam i have mentioned there is 60 number of manufacturers but now it is reduced come to 40 or around 43 or 42 so why these 
manufacturer unit is disappeared. As because it is due to the enforcement as well as we have gone through as per the Drug and Cosmetic Act, the many units they have to close out. As because they are not <coughs> complying with the various DNC rules and GMP compliances. Government initiative, the government of India has taken several measures to promote cultivation and export of medicinal plant. NMPB, you know, the funded of this, to this program. So my conclusion is the medicinal plan as a segment has a scope of tremendous growth which can benefit from investment is identified space. They will allow Ayurveda and herbal looks that industry to evolve itself from a cognitize the needs and trends of new generation. Bringing Ayurveda into the mainstream requires a concerned effort which can the Ministry of Ayush and Ayush Ministry can also help the companies seeking overseas sales and their products. The requirement for which, as discussed, can be government process can streamline with the ministry intervention and outreach of other stakeholders. So the corona virus pandemic has reminded us to our body immunity and you have experience with various herbal drugs and herbal intervention. Ministry has also emphasized uh, with various preparation as well as various uh, herbal ingredients which to be used in a regular basis. So with this, I want to conclude and I hope the users of herbal drugs, they actually maintain their safety as well as they should lose their personal lives of the medicine. Thank you. My sincere thanks to uh, both the speakers, uh, Professor Dubey and Professor Aki Sharma, for flagging uh, such important issues. Uh, now we are going to have our uh, research presentations. So I'll uh, request again Professor Dubey and Professor Sharma to evaluate. Uh, each presentation will be for 10 minutes, followed by two minutes of Q&A. So kindly restrict your presentation within 10 minutes. Please don't spill it because that is also one of the way we are going to judge the presentation because uh, you know uh, the idea behind this presentation is also to evaluate and uh, try to acknowledge those research work. So over to you, sir. Good evening. Coming to the uh, technical session, the first lecture of this technical session is prepared by Dr. Sujata Madam. It will be my honor to invite her on stage for our presentation on topic by Baron, the traditional medicinal book of Manipur, India, and validation of some traditional medicine. Please give a round of applause to welcome her. Book of Manipur, 
India and validation of some traditional medicine. So here, uh, this is a uh, simple uh, discussion about uh, taking uh, traditional uh, medicine and validating to some extent the uh, bioactivity. So this is a very simple uh, illustration. Uh, uh, my, uh, uh, we have Mybarol, which is a collection of medicinal natural product of Manipur. In, the, in figure number one, it is shown there, it is written on a wooden box. So as uh, I was listening to all the lectures from the experts, so I think this is not a folk medicine because it is. it was written from that time in older time in uh, Mithai Mayak script and it is there uh, uh, self-guarded so, and uh, I have a special message from the people who are self-guarding the book that uh, I should take some advice or something which uh, because they want to be codified, they are not codified and they, uh, they assume that they should be codified because it has been well documented in the Mithai Mayak script and it is not uh, passed orally as I mean other traditional folk medicine and uh, here I have taken a uh, traditional medicinal practice of using a uh, mushroom. So uh, this is wood ear mushroom and this is a uh, picture of me and with the uh, wood ear mushroom in IBSD uh, campus where I did my research uh, associate ship and uh, this is auricularia delicata so it is uh, recorded in our traditional medicinal book that it has liver healing activity and I have taken up this uh, to uh, validate in the scientific terms whether it is, it is having this uh, liver healing activity. Uh, I just took uh, three simple steps. Uh, I, uh, I, we plan to do uh, uh, SA guided fractionation in vivo but uh, they, would, they would have sacrificed uh, I mean, many uh, rats, so we thought of changing the plant and I thought of taking antioxidant activity for selecting the extract. So we did the uh, antioxidant activity of uh, the different extracts we had uh, uh, taken and then uh, the extract with the optimum activity was used for finding out the in vivo study in rats. And later on with the extracts with uh, maximum activity we did uh, in vivo study which is our uh, experiment in live rats and we found that the ethyl acetate and methanol extract were showing the uh, optimum activity so they were selected and we didn't uh, go for the um, SA guided fractionation and uh, uh, we got maximum activity and uh, uh, and last of all, we had to find out uh, because it was because of antioxidant activity, we uh, screened for uh, antioxidant compounds which are known and we took uh, HPLC for screening the compound. So this is uh, checking the antioxidant activity of the various extracts uh, to see uh, which, uh, to select which uh, extract uh, we had to use for studying in vivo or for studying in mice. And uh, uh, with this, we got direct methanol and methanol is dead extract, having the uh, maximum antioxidant activity. So this is in vivo hepatoprotective activity. Uh, in simple term, it is liver healing activity. So it was uh, done with the help of uh, the pharmacology department in IBSD. So I, I didn't do it myself, but then I know that the, these are the pictures of five uh, photomicrograph of tissues. Uh, which is a normal one and then which is a diseased one and here also I would like to emphasize that there is no uh, proper thera for, uh, therapy for liver diseases so people are still using uh, silymarine so we have a silymarine uh, standard where it heals the uh, liver uh, first we give uh, paracetamol to the rats and then we make them diseased the, I mean uh, in a make their liver diseased and then we give the different extracts and silivery. So this is one, uh, still one place where uh, uh, the antenor medicine plays an important role that uh, still silivery, which is a, com which is a combination of uh, some silivery, silivery compounds. It is not a single compound, like even cucumin. Cucumin is not a single compound, but a mixture of cucuminoids. So like that in uh, here also silivarine, which is a standard, which is used for liver healing, 
is also a, a group of compounds which have three, four compounds and uh, the synergy effect is giving the healing effect. So this is a case where uh, 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 I mean, a good synergy effect is uh, working better than a single drug. And this is a, a experiment where uh, we had to screen the extract with uh, 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 using some standards which have very high antioxidant activity. So I screened with uh, other standards also, uh, but then we got a peak in, of uh, chlorogenic acid, which is a super antioxidant. So we checked in the extract, and then we confirmed the uh, peak for chlorogenic acid uh, by spiking with standard chlorogenic acid. So this uh, was a way for confirming the um, antioxidant activity of the ethyl acetal extract. So later on, we had uh, worked for uh, I mean isolating the compound and then characterizing it. So it has been used for a formulation in uh, work which is being uh, a patent which is published. So it is not shared here. So this is some HPLC conditions where we, I mean, uh, the conditions where we had uh, exposed the uh, extract uh, to get the peak and uh, to spike for confirming the presence of chlorogenic acid. So this is a simple, I mean, the illustration that we have uh, of the experiment we had taken for validating the liver healing activity of uh, the, the uh, which is recorded in our traditional medicine book. And uh, we uh, concluded that uh, it is um, because of the mitochondrial targeted antioxidant effect of chlorogenic acid, and uh, it has it was giving the hepatoprotective activity, the liver protecting activity of the uh, mushroom, and uh, everyone is talking about using traditional medicine. And then traditional medicine is, uh, I, I think uh, it was there also from the COVID that the reason that traditional medicine has been good led for drug discovery. So I don't have much expertise. Uh, I've just started working on traditional medicine, but I have some publications. So I know that uh, even before the COVID also, there were, I mean, there are many diseases in the world, like Alzheimer's disease, even for liver, there is no therapy. So the, we should, um, uh, I mean, we should well document the traditional medicine because we know that uh, it has been uh, used for a thousand of years with uh, hit and try. So these are positive results. So in my case also, I got the liver healing activity from our traditional medicine book. So, uh, so I think that even our traditional medicinal book, if it can be, it should be codified and it should be given some recognitions because it is well documented and it has been there for thousands of years. So I had come up with this message, uh, especially for this message, for my traditional, uh, for our traditional book. Uh, these are some references, uh, some publications from my site on traditional medicine and uh, publication on that book, uh, on the work. Uh, because I didn't do essay guided uh, fractionation, I missed uh, uh, publishing in, in the Journal of Internal Pharmacology, but I got it published in International Journal of Medicinal Mushrooms. So this has been, uh, I mean, I have worked on other uh, traditional medicine uh, from the Mybron, and it has been uh, giving me positive results. And uh, there are some around, for me, I have published around 30 uh, publications and uh, behind that the traditional medicine book of uh, our traditional medicine book was my guide. So I think that it, should, I mean, uh, it is a good lead for drug discovery for not only COVID for but those diseases for which there is no therapy in the world. Uh, I, I would like to end my presentation here. Thank you.
Dr. Sujata. Yes, sir. You have written a book. No, no, sir. I have written a book chapter. Book chapter. By moral and traditional medicinal book for money. Title to book. Set a book like writer. Yes, it is a book, not chapter. And one thing in India. This you have no title is this. Untitled it appears it is a book and validation of some traditional medicine. This is. Eh? Okay. Sir, uh, sir, title I have read this for uh, for this conference, but then I have uh, written a book, uh, I mean, book chapter on traditional and folk medicine as. <laughs> And you have documented the efficacy of auricularia. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. and hepato protective drug. Ah, liver healing, sir. Liver, okay. Mm -hmm. So you see, liver, why not you check the melubarium content? Why antioxidant activity? No, sir, I did everything. It is checked everything. Uh, I mean, everything, but you did not present. There was microprotograph of treated and untreated liver. Yeah, because sir, the biochemical environment. Yes, yes, I did everything. That is why it could get published in the. You have done everything, but mm -hmm. I do not know that. Mm -hmm. That has been presented here. <laughs> the biochemical aspect not altered, mm -hmm. and for liver protection, what will be the role of antioxidant or antimicrobial product? Mm -hmm. Sir, so, uh, we have just uh, one minute here. You should hear the question. The last one you have seen antimicrobial activity. No, so anti what, what, my, my, why, why antimicrobial activity for liver protection? Sir, it is anti mitochondrial. Anti antimicrobial activity, International Journal of Medicinal Mushrooms, you have published. Oh, yes, uh, sir, uh, there was a portion for antimicrobial activity also, but then the main focus is on the liver healing activities. But look, this mm -hmm. product is antimicrobial also, antioxidant also, it is hepatic protective also, mm -hmm. and maybe in other cases also. Yes, yes, sir, we have made a formulation out of this and it is uh, patent, patented. Uh, yes, you are right, sir. It ha I mean, it is a very good, uh, I mean, uh, antioxidant, so we have made a formulation. It is uh, published and patented from NIT Manipur. When did you publish it? Uh, sir, it was published uh, uh, just, uh, I think it was just uh, five months back, I think. Five months back. So mm -hmm. when patented? It was filed in uh, 2018 or 19, sir. I'm confused. You filed patent? Yes, yes. It is filed, no? not granted. Not yet granted, but published. You say it is filed. Not yes, yes. Not granted. It's published because we have to wait for two years for examination after that it's published. Know, that mm -hmm. I know. So you have managed, managed, you have investigated its uh, antioxidant activity and to microphotograph to say it is liver protein. Sir, we have determined many other parameters, but I saw the audience that it will be students from many other departments, so I thought it will be boring for them. I just skipped that and I just wanted to make my presentation okay. short. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to this, uh, this mushroom, many area, how many other you see plants you have to investigate in the trial? Uh, sir, I just uh, uh, focus on this particular mushroom because it was recorded in. I think there is some. <laughs> well, there is some of some. Yes, yes, yes. So some means not one. <laughs> some means more than one. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. sir, sir, there are some species from ficus, uh, pomifera, then there were species from crassocephalum, and there were species from uh, strobilanthus. So, this was there, but then I just wanted to illustrate that uh, this okay. is one activity and it was confirmed, uh, scientifically validated. Okay, from my side it is okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for your efforts and sharing your insightful knowledge with us. Coming to the second lecture of this technical session, uh, which is prepared by Dr. Neshwari Devi, madam. It will be a privilege to invite uh, Dr. Devi, madam, on stage to present on topic of bioactive components of two therapeutic plants of clerodendron 
and their constituents to traditional medicine commonly practices in home remedy home remedy prescriptions thank you stay with us
Carbonoid 36.82, phenol 4.18, alkaloid 20, saponin 45, tannin 1.01 mg per gram in chlorodenum sinensis. Similarly, mineral also the first elements potassium 6.4, calcium 10.3, magnesium 5.31, phosphorus 0.2, sulfur 1.35, iron 0.38, zinc 0.13, copper 0.06, manganese 0.66. In chlorodenum chlorobacana, and then potassium 7.1, calcium 29.5, magnesium 5.81, phosphorus 0.66, sulfur 2.3, iron 0.56, zinc 0.10, copper 0.06, manganese 0.16 in chlorodenum chlorobacinensis. Cobalt is not detected this experiment. The finding evidence that the Plant chlorodendum is full of pieces of phytochemical compounds, mineral potential, antioxidants. Eventually, this plant is not a simple plant. There are a chemofence part of chemicals, the basic engine of chemodiversity, a very essential preserve for the generation yet to come. These two tests, chlorodendum, chlorodendum synthesis, exit in the phenol alkaloid. Saponin and actinid, and the chlorinum synthesis exit in the antioxidant and the flavonoid. Regarding mineral, also chlorinum polyvocalinum, or lesser value than the chlorinum synthesis. Hence, this plant is the bioactive compounds and the minerals that accentuate the synergetic activities of constituent compounds. This is the parcel of these two chlorodendum. The first series is the chlorodendum polyvocalinum, second is the chlorodendum sinensis in the comparison of the antioxidant, flavonoid, phenol, alkaloid, saponin, and the tannin. Similarly, mineral also, first series is the chlorodendum polyvocalinum, second is the chlorodendum sinensis, comparison to the potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, iron, zinc, copper, and the manganese. The biotic compound is two test medicinal plant evidence therapeutic characteristics. The integral incorporation of the herbal components plays the prerequisite of predetermination of biotic compounds in the medicinal plants for the pharmaceutical preparation and the their own prescription on treatment. Conclusion and discussion. Suggestion. Detection, identification, and the estimation of therapeutic components associated in the medicinal plants here, synergistic and the antagonistic action to combine herbal their activity on fossil organism, different element, self action on cell, tissue, and the metallic function, etc. Let the infective urgency for the medicine plant based research industry. The research work also evidence the need of innovation of our age for traditional knowledge of indigenous system of amalgamation to the modern era of mindset. The finding will also ignite the popularity of science and technology in the mindset, particularly to the rural, where more adjacent to the food extract herbal prescription. Lastly, the present work also indispensably highlights the compulsive renovation of indigenous technological knowledge through the powerful skill hand, rural people, particularly for the rural women, for the development of medicine plant-based industries, year of utility and uses. This is the IU's methodology that aforesaid authors are here. Thank you for listening my presentation. Lastly, future my investigation work, Sir uh, Dr. Yadav, scientist of the list, who are given me the opportunity of, Sir, I also want like to the identification of compound. Actually, my college is the rural area. That's why this possibility is not here. But sir, given me the opportunity, I want also to take to the top one. Sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nishadu. Uh, I have a little question on here. That is there any uh, other work in North States on Polypatina? Any such work? On your feet, profile? I don't understand. Yes. Uh, 
Bhakti Institute at Bhan Study Science and Technology. One lady, uh, she has extensively worked on lipid by Dr. Claude Adam. Because it is traditionally used for hypertension. So in your place, people are using for hypertension. Yes, sir. Because of my colleagues are very friendly, really, yeah. This is some problem this year, sir. But it is people are using using it, no? This yes, plant? Yes. The tender leaf, how yeah, are you? Yeah, sir, mostly this plant is used for the hill people only. Okay. They take to the early morning, ah. working time. They yeah. take to the, sir, why you take uh, it to this one? They ask that. This hill people say that uh, this is in for the uh, BP plant. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, mostly used in the hill people. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would like to call Dr. Salam Himika Devi, ma'am, who is working on a miraculous plan which works effectively against SARC and COVID-19. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, respected uh, Professor N.K. Dubey, uh, chairperson of this session, and also to Professor Rama Ramakanta Sarma, sir. I want to give one remark because uh, this actually this Dinospora cordifolia. Uh, I'm not actually doing the thing, but uh, I'm just reviewing all the papers regarding this. And I myself in the uh, background from the geology for one clarification. Okay, myself uh, a faculty in the department of life sciences, geology department, and dealing with the genetics specialization subject at the Manipur University. And uh, uh, clarification is that why I am pre uh, present and then uh, going to present this review paper. Uh, in this international conference is that in Manipur, this Nitho Kongli, which is common name of Dinospora cordifolia, and then also our chairperson sir have uh, highlighted the importance of why it is called Amrita in the, and the Guduchi in common, because it have very, very important uh, bioactive com uh, uh, compounds. Okay, so I will highlight uh, each and every point. Okay. So the research uh, problem is that this particular plant have uh, many phytochemical compounds, and we all from the discussion from many other experts, we are hearing that many phytochemicals are obtained from different plants, which are the main source. So the outbreak of COVID-19, many people in, in Manipur especially, they depend upon this uh, extract of the court, this Nitho uh, Kongli plant, and they. They told that uh, we can prevent COVID-19 from by consuming the extracts of this particular plant. So why I specifically choose this plant? Then there is now no specific antidote for the COVID-19 till now. So the Manipur is a very uh, large number of medicinally important plants, as well as it is also highlighted that 41 primitive flowering plants under different families and 75 species of endemic plants have been listed. Uh, Dinospora cordifolia, and there is one such plant which we can use as a whole plant. Each and every part of the plant is having its important properties. So uh, it's a climbing soil, and it, it is very easily suitable to any type of soil, acidic or you know, type of soil it can be grown. And uh, the more importantly, it is the called nectar or food from immortals, as also highlighted by our chairperson, sir, because it has very, very important anti-cancer, antioxidant, anti-diabetic, and you know, many such anti-microbial, uh, anti-inflammatory, and to, to uh, mention some. But there are lots of any uh, more uh, uh, remedies which we can extract from this particular extract. It can be 
hepatoprotective equity, immunosuppression, immunostimulatory, stimulatory, then uh, then a toxic, cardiotoxic, hepatotoxic, uh, with tonic we can prepare from this particular plant. These are some of the important uh, uses, applications, as well as properties of this particular plant from the Giloy. This is the common name, that's why everyone must be aware. So the juice of this stem can be used for many diseases like fever, diarrhea, zortis, emaciation, then leucoria, then uh, skin infections, insect bites, even snake bites. And it is also anti-diabetic property and it improves also digestion as well as appetite, anti-arthritis and osteoporotic activities it is having and also it is having anti-cancerous property. It is going to uh, reduce the cell proliferation rate and then it also is having wound healing properties. So uh, each and every part, starting from stem, roots, leaves, it are all important. So this is the particular uh, plant that I'm talking about. So this each and every part of the plant is important. And the roots, the, even the flowers and seeds are also having its important values. Then seeds are also there. So uh, actually, uh, these are the important uh, bioactive compounds extracted from this particular plant and many alkaloids, as to mention, the palmitin, glycosides, nectones, steroids, polysaccharides, diterpenoids, phenols, and aliphatic compounds, and even secondary metabolites are extracted. Okay, many researchers have done this work. This is not actually my original work. But the secondary metabolites, the secondary metabolites, the most common one is barberin, and which is a very is intensively studied for COVID-19, and this is having such anti-COVID, anti-hepatitis property because of this particular secondary metabolite, barberin. And others also is there, but the remaining is not yet uh, validated, and even I didn't find any papers regarding the, uh, the anti the COVID activities of the remaining secondary metabolites. These are the chemical structures. <coughs> and the objective of my review uh, paper is by prospecting potential of this particular plant. From, from this particular plant, we can extract antiviral, that is anti-hepatitis, anti-COVID, SARS-CoV-2, and then anti-HIV property even, then anti-cancer, and the oxygen property that many also the oral speakers have mentioned, highlighted anti as it means antioxidant, which we can encounter the free radical attacks in our body, then anti-diabetic, which we're going to lower the blood glucose level, and the antimicrobial drugs uh, for the fungal as well as bacterial infection and other many uses. Okay, so to bring out the complete understanding of this significant uh, pharmacological applications, this Giloy as a blessing to the humankind if we are able to extract the exact biochemical molecule which we can treat the COVID-19. So the methodology and the experimental design that I have used is I have searched, downloaded many uh, research articles which are very, very recent from the NCBI PubMed and Google Scholar and also other scientific databases like PubChem and then uh, the GenomeNet and also focusing on different aspects of Dinospora gordiforia and after thorough analysis and after reading all the research articles, I have compiled this paper. So after uh, the thorough uh, reading and then analysis, the uh, results <coughs> that I um, Propose is that the secondary metabolites have the ability to inhibit SARS-CoV-2 main protease with high binding efficiency. So the barberin, which is the main secondary metabolite extracted from the Nitrocongli tinospora cordiforia, it can control viral replication by regulating 3CL pro proteins function due to its easy inhibition. That is 3CL pro protein is the chemotrypsin like protease, which is the main enzyme uh, produced by the SARS CoV 2 virus. And it is going to, if we um, inhibit this particular enzyme, then the replication as well as transcription of this virus can be prohibited. And which uses the, the novel uh, design of the drug, drug if we are able to inhibit this particular enzyme. 
This is the structure of 3 cell pro protein. It has three, three domains, domain 1, 2, and 3. And especially these domains, they are going to bind with the, to, uh, this histidine 41 region and the cystidine 145 regions with the hydrogen bonds binding by the diaphragmation. If we are going to give, after the extract treatment or after the, uh, the metabolite is going to interact with this particular protein and then stop the binding capacity of this uh, bone formation, then the function of that particular protein will stop. And then definitely the virus is not able to replicate inside the human body and that is the, the novel drug that we can design from this particular plant. And this is one paper that I have recently uh, downloaded, that is from the Hawang. And this is also the model showing the uh, viral, this is the main protease of the COVID, um, uh, SARS CoV 2 virus. And it have many types of uh, binding sites, cleavage site, and cleavage initial site, recognition site, and which are uh, more emphasis on this. So this diac protein, if we stop, uh, then we can produce the novel antibody from this. Okay, so uh, uh, after the proper in vivo as well as in vitro, in, in vitro uh, can, cancer cell line and other uh, mice experimental uh, designs, now we can come to the conclusion that this Dinospora cordifolia is very, very effective against SARS-CoV-2 virus with all the data that I have compiled. And in conclusion, uh, actually, I'm not from the botany or any other plant-related thing, but why I am present in this conference is that uh, I am myself an expertise on the genotoxicity assessment of the plant alkaloid, which are mainly chromosome abrasion, micronucleus, and common assay, and even the sponsored health abnormality assays, which uh, we have done and then there is no such uh, the, the DNA damaging or clustering effect. So it is safe to consume the food extract of this uh, plant even. So these are the different secondary metabolites. And uh, uh, here I have not highlighted any of my references. I, am, I basically work on the smoke as tobacco products in the northeastern region like Sadagura. And uh, here publication is not shown. These are all the references I took for my review paper. And in context with this Nithokomi uh, in Manipur, we have the Wangzing Thobal site. There is one plantation. There they are doing such large scale cultivation and the production of plantage. From here we can purchase many plantains. It can be available in rupees three per plantlet. And the Manipur Medicinal Plant Board is also uh, is giving permission to the cultivators as well as all the stakeholders to purchase it and to cultivate it. And uh, okay, I am out. Yeah, okay, sir. Over. Okay, sir. You Climbing in the host plants like mango, 
and if it is in the limb plant, because yes. limb itself is the very, very medicinally useful plant, it will enhance this product because the stems uh, they are going to extract some uh, the compounds from the uh, stem of the limb plant also. So they are going to give some synergistic effect. Okay, you know this thing. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I want to thank all the organizers as well as uh, you know, everyone present here once again. It's very the, fascinating to interact with all the learned persons here and the, all the students and volunteers present here. Thank you so much for again. So once again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I would request Professor Vijaya Mukherjee for her presentation. A very good afternoon to respected N.K. Dubey sir and, uh, and the other sir and also the fellow dignitaries and the organizers and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present my review paper. Again, uh, I am Professor Vijaya Mukherjee, the assistant professor in the Department of Dietetics and Applied Nutrition in Amity University, Kolkata. And this paper has been done as a review work by me and uh, my students of the BSc Honours Dietetics and Applied Nutrition. Well, uh, there's a small story that why I have chosen this work because uh, this particular plant that you are seeing, the photo credit goes to me only, like it is available at my place also. This Xanthosanum armatum is something that is actually available in one of the northeast states of India. So that is the reason I have taken. As we know, the WHO has estimated that 70 to 80 percent of the population living in Africa and India and other developing nations, they rely on traditional health systems for their primary health care. And that is the reason I thought that this is the best place to throw some light on its immense pharmacological benefits as the theme is traditional uh, medicinal practices in the Bimstek region. And this Xanthosalum armatum is abundantly found in Bimstek regions and that too in Northeast India. And I feel lucky to showcase one such medicinal plant of Northeast India while standing in one of the state of Northeast India, Assam. W, as uh, I have said that the WHO has estimated uh, regarding the usage of this plant and as we can see from the graph, from the table I mean that India is containing approximately 18,664 plant species of which 3,000 are having the medicinal benefits which is approximately 16.1% of the global scenario. Now while talking about the global scenario of the medicinal plants, the use of the medicinal plants is in practice in ancient times as Dubey Sar has already mentioned and we have seen like so many uh, traditional, the epics and everything, everywhere it was mentioned starting from the Sanjeevani, Puti and the Amrita and all. So these can be considered as the origin of the modern medicines also. So the compounds of the plant origin have been and still have an important source of compounds for drugs. Medicinal plants are globally valuable sources of herbal products and they are disappearing at a very high speed due to the unplanned collection. With increasing world population and widening economic disparity between the poor and the rich, the affordability of the healthcare systems to the underprivileged is becoming a global concern and hence the World Health Organization has already recognized the potential of the traditional and alternate systems of medicine to provide succor to the health security to the developing nations. So while talking about the Xanthosylum armatum, this is also called winged prickly ash or rattan pepper in English. It's a species of plant in the Rutiashi family. And this has got the flowering months in the April, May and fruiting months from August to October. And it has got various common names, but most commonly it is known as Jabrang in Northeast India and sometimes it is also known as Timur in Nepal. 
and as we can see that there are other several names also that are being available uh, as you can see in the list. Now talking about the global distribution, it is found in India, Nepal, Pakistan, Myanmar, China, Japan, North and South Korea, North Vietnam, Taiwan, Lesser Sand Islands, Philippines, Malaysia, Peninsula and Sumatra. As we see, India is one of the country where 13 species of Xanthozyla marmatum are recorded. Hot valleys of the Himalayas from Jammu and Kashmir to Arunachal Pradesh and also in Bhutan to the altitudes of 1000 to 2100 meter also found in Eastern Ghats in Orissa, Andhra Pradesh at 1200 meter. While talking about Arunachal Pradesh, 20 locations have been identified like these places. Like in Musai, Sijosa, Jiro, Zoram, Yachuli, Yazali and Savali. There is a small story uh, behind uh, uh, this Arunachal Pradesh. In my one of my tour uh, in Bondila, I was severely got affected with a cough and cold. And then my sister-in-law being the daughter of a Nishin tribe, she offered me this chabram. And she just gave me that, she boiled it in water and she gave me. And to, miraculously the cold and cough was gone in just one or two days. And I was a bit relieved. So that actually sparked the interest, but then in one of my lectures, I was asked to talk about its anti-diabetic property. And then when I started doing the literature work on it, that let me see that what all other benefits this xanthoxylum armatum is actually having. Then uh, to my surprise, that it was not just limited to the cough and cold, but rather lot many. And uh, thanks goes to the chemicals, the abundant chemicals that are actually been present in this xanthoxylum armatum. Although all parts of the plants are rich in various chemicals which are extracted by hydro distillation, technically for six hours, uh, again it has been found from the literature. But uh, these plant parts, like if I talk individually, like the seeds, they are rich in the flavonoids called tambulin and tambulol, which in the later slides I'll be talking about, like how they are effective and having the anti-diabetic properties. Uh, also, the oil of the plant, they are obtained from the dried foods, contains linalool, linalyl acetate, citral, geranol, methyl cinnamate, limonene and saponin. Leaves, this contains methyl and, and linoleic ketone, linalyl acetate and the other compounds. Similarly, the bark and the root are also, as you can see from the table itself, that they are containing a lot of the chemicals which are basically having the pharmacological properties. But even though this particular herb has been used, like this is used in a culinary purpose, like the people of the Arunachal Pradesh, they use it in their cooking also. But this herb being having so much of traditional uses in the different health aspect, they do not have any such major publications. Like if we really talk about the published journals, not much are available. I could find only 16 to 17 journals, which are actually showing certain the pharmacological properties. And also they are not having any proper uh, cultivation process. So that is the reason why I thought of bringing this topic into this particular forum. Because being one of the important states the, of the Northeast India, which is blessed with this particular medicinal plant, which I'm going to show you in my next slides, that how traditionally it has been used. And also I will show you the various uh, in vitro experiments with this particular drug, uh, sorry, with this particular herb which is showing various other health benefits. Then there is an, in, an immense need of doing certain further research work so that some technologies can be developed towards uh, the cultivation process because this particular plant, the cultivation uh, can be done in the clay loamy soil and Arunachal Pradesh is gifted with the clay loamy soil and not just the Arunachal Pradesh, it is basically the step kind of a thing which is holding less of water. All the other states are also having uh, this beneficial, I mean like they are blessed with this kind of soil. That even the uh, country like a neighboring country like Nepal, they are doing good work in terms of Xanthoxylum armatum and in Arunachal Pradesh, it is still being collected from the wild by the indigenous tribes. So as it has been collected by the indigenous tribes, so it can add up to their economic importance also. While talking about the traditional uses, like they are being traditionally collected, they are being traditionally used, and it can be of the economic importance probably if they can be trained on the cultivation, if some technologies can be developed uh, towards the cultivation so that the production can be improved, and hence there can be an economic benefit from both ends. The leaves, as per the traditional uses, the leaves are mainly used in the cure of the ingestion, 
in digestion cholera seeds has been used in the fever dyspepsia cholera again in digestion depression bark and bark of the tree is highly used as carminative stomachic and helminth anti helminthic properties then the pickles of the fruit has been used in the cough cold abdominal pain tonsils numb uh, limb numbness the berries has got a carminative and antispasmodic in nature and the whole plant is used in cure of the scabies and contains a great anti diabetic properties as well this has been collected from couple of the journals of which one i have already mentioned as a reference now the few pharmacological activities i studied that how they are doing it so from the different in vitro experiments that has been found that the ethanolic extract of the xanthoxylam armatum is basically having antioxidant activity which is lowering the liver enzymes and liver inflammation so they are having the hepatoprotective similarly the extracts of the leaf bark fruit maximum alpha glucoside is uh, an inhibition and thus they are having the anti diabetic property then the crude extract are having the calcium antagonistic mechanism and thus they are the spasmolytic leaf extract are enhancing the apoptotic response of the chemotherapeutic drugs yes one of the journal has showed that this particular herb is actually increasing the chemotherapeutic drug efficacy and also this uh, various extracts of the xanthoxylam armatum has been found to be doing the lipid peroxidation increasing the antioxidant level and thus are working in the hypotensive anticholinergic uh, effect they are also exhibiting so these are the various ailments against which these fruits are being used i have also mentioned the various chemical components the bioactive uh, uh, substances that are present in the different parts of this uh, parts of this particular fruit which are actually helpful in the different ailments now i will be focusing on the diabetes because we know that if we go by the demography of a worldwide view of diabetes so in to the by 2019 i mean like uh, it showed that 77 million individuals had diabetes in india as per the report of the international diabetes federation so i studied that how it has been working in the anti diabetic effect so it has been found that the extracts of the leaf bark fruit are having the maximum alpha glucosidis inhibition the alpha glucosidis enzymes basically prevents the conversion of the starch to glucose and thus it controls the blood glucose level also it has been found to be having the anti lipidemic effect because it has been reducing the uh, total cholesterol triglyceride high density lipoproteins vldl so what the cultivation part i have already said that these are being collected from the wild habitats and they do not have any proper cultivation practices and uh, so it is highly needed that we should be having a uh, proper uh, cultivation format proper engineered techniques because this uh, like it is coming in the cost of 40 per kg 40 rupees per kg for wild collection so going forward conservation and promotion of the medicinal plants cultivation education to locals herbal garden is a concept that is today all again i came to know about it and to develop the cultivation system development of the nursery and more research is needed to increase the yield and to improve the distribution system so to conclude my work this review work xanthoxylam armatum is not just a toothic plant as we know that india is a rich sources of many rare species of the several medicinal plants which can show marvelous effects for rapid improvement of our health but due to lack of knowledge till date we are not able to find out the 100% outcomes of these plants here we try to portray that an ancient plant xanthoxylam armatum which is found in huge number in northeastern states of india can work as anti lipidemic anti carcinogenic anti diabetic anti inflammatory agents despite its ethno botanical and economic values the species is still collected and unmanaged from the wild <clears throat> to the climatic conditions are needed so further research is needed regarding this and uh, i'm sorry uh, ramakanta sharma sir that i forgot to take your name then so here i end my presentation thank you these are the references that i have used i have studied my acknowledgement thank you uh, thank you professor vijay mukherjee uh, i think you have uh, just done a very good review on that but what is the pharmaceutical active agent you have seen there sir it is not just a single pharmaceutical
pharmaceutical active agent that we have found. But it is because I have focused my work towards the anti-diabetic activity, being a certified diabetes educator by myself, I thought to study it more. So I found the tambulin that it is having. Tambulin is basically having the, it is inhibiting the alpha glucosidase enzyme. This alpha glucosidase enzyme basically, uh, like uh, it uh, does the conversion of the starch to glucose and thus this glucose level when it comes to the system. Does it go through the, how, man, uh, how much anti-diabetic preparation uh, is available? Sir, not available, sir. Nothing is available commercially. Everything has been done in a traditional aspect of this. I have told you to our place that we are in the Patra Kash. Uh, it does not mention that. So generally, we, we have talked to our students. So you have gone through the details. Sir, so far the journals that I have collected, I did not find any mention of the drugs that are available uh, in the formulation of the Xanthocylum armata. Okay. Thank you. everybody uh, for sharing with me. Uh, I am uh, from Kolkata. So first and foremost, greetings from Kolkata to everybody who is present over here, all from uh, different parts of India as well as the other countries. And um, uh, I won't, I do not want to waste much time. So I will start my presentation uh, with due respect to uh, Dubey sir and all the other dignitaries present here and uh, my students. Uh, so my topic, as you can see, is uh, selenium and rice. It's a completely different uh, things that I would like to talk about. One is a plant and one is a mineral that you can know, that you already know about, okay? So this was my abstract. Uh, since uh, the topic of this uh, conference or seminar is bioprospecting, uh, my work is almost close to it because I have worked on the uh, biochemical aspects as well as physiological, psychological uh, on rice, the effect or influence of selenium on rice. So um, I will skip this, the rest of the part. This is the introduction. We know that uh, since uh, plants are a living organism, I have selected the uh, a plant, a cereal crop as my first uh, tire of model for experimentation and uh, plants also have got the inherent uh, defense mechanism to fight um, abiotic stresses. Okay, and now this selenium is obviously an element which uh, kind of induces uh, formation of uh, ROS, uh, but first I would like to introduce you to what is ROS. We all know ROS is basically reactive oxygen species which cause harm to the uh, DNA as well as protein and lipids, the bi biomolecules. And we also know what kind of uh, harm it can cause. So I will not go into the details. Um, now why selenium? Selenium is a very uh, very well known element and, uh, and uh, much study has been done on it and uh, this is just an introduction on selenium and how it is obtained uh, in free form in nature. It is basically obtained as an alloy or uh, it is in amalgamation form with iron or lead or silver and copper. Uh, this is the chemical nature of sel selenium, I won't dwell into it skip this slide. These are the forms of selenium which is available. 
the inorganic selenium forms we know is available in the form of selenite and selenate salt and the major organic form is selenomethionine and selenocysteine and we are very well aware of selenocysteine we have heard about it it is supposedly the 21st amino acid so uh, these are all a uh, part of uh, selenoproteins which are available in the animal cells also now selenium has a dr jekyll and mr hyde character okay it can act as a friend if it wants to and it can also become your enemy if it wants to so it is not necessarily restricted to animals it is also restricted to plants okay so selenium at certain level of concentration it acts as your friend and after it crosses that level it will definitely become a foe and it can also lead to death of both plants as well as animals so these are some of the um, both sides i've uh, shown of in uh, human beings as well as in uh, plants so i will skip this slide since time is restricted this is the metabolism of selenium uh, i would like to just emphasize that selenium um, competes with sulfur uptake in plants right? because it kind of take over the sulfur pathway which occurs in the plant okay right so next this is the metabolic pathway it follows we can see that selenate selenite Uh, is there and then you get your selenocysteine then selenomethionine ultimately it is volatilized and exposed and released into the atmosphere and in the uh, in the left hand side uh, yes in the other side you can see how it is uptake from the soil and it is released into the atmosphere through the plants okay this is the whole ecological aspect of how selenium is taken up from the soil uh, through the plants then uh, the herbivorous animals they uh, kind of uh, next to tar form and then it ultimately consumed by humans and the, by that side you can see that the amount of selenium which is required in certain regions if it is below 55 microgram uh, then it is supposedly selenium deficient region it between 55 and 100 it is a low selenium region and if it is uh, crossing that limit then it is obviously a high or rich selenium region okay now why rice of course since rice is a staple food and india being an agricultural country we know that rice is uh, cultivated almost everywhere in india from the plains to the hills and northeast india is very very uh, our rice is a very important uh, uh, staple diet of northeast india also so of the bimstek countries as well those countries which are involved in this conference and we do know that rice has got 20% of the world's dietary energy supply okay compared to the other such kind of staple crop like wheat and maize and oh one thing more that i have to say rice is also mentioned in ayurveda it does have some uh, its active principles has got medicinal value okay so i have chosen for my work uh, previously two particular rice cultivars uh, that you can see it's mentioned over here shakti and kitish why because i'm since i'm from west bengal i have that uh, to be server saying uh, uh, act locally think globally so i tried uh, to follow him a little bit though very i mean he's very small compared to <laughs> but uh, so this is the local variant which is uh, very very much popular amongst the uh, farmers in now takes okay so they prefer to cultivate this high yielding rice varieties these two are those uh, kind of varieties which they really prefer to cultivate in our place okay next so the objective of my study i will just skip this slide it's just to study the effect as i have already previously mentioned these are the material and methods that i have uh, written uh, that if you want i can give you the access so these are the basic parameters that i have studied so the main study that i did was on the glutathione uh, one part of my study was on glutathione pathway and we know that ascorbic glutathione is a very important pathway in uh, plants okay now uh, so you can see that i have studied accordingly these are the material methods that are followed to study these enzymes and the substrate 
I've also studied particular some selenoproteins, especially selenocysteine and selenomethionine, which are very, very important in animals as well as plants. Okay. So this is the mechanism that uh, I have uh, done to study them, the isolation analysis and the rest of the fact. And I've done uh, uh, RP, reverse phase HPLC to study them. Okay. And then I've studied in the psychological level the DNA damage that is caused uh, by this uh, effect of selenium on rice tissue. Uh, I've done the tunnel assay and uh, studied it through flow cytometry. Okay. Mm, so we do know uh, this uh, ascorbic glutathione cycle. I'm not going into the details of it. Uh, uh, sorry if uh, the graph is missing. What I have found out, because of these are the results, that uh, there was an increase in the total GSH level or glutathione level uh, when I kind of supplied or supplemented with a low concentration of selenium. But up, up to a certain concentration, it is okay. But when I have crossed that concentration, there has been, of course, a retardation. Now we know that there is increase in glutathione level is correlated with the increase in the activity of its enzymes as well like glutathione. These are all, uh, we know that these are all oxygen radical scavengers like glutathione reductase, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione S transfers. These they all scavenge the radicals uh, in order to protect at the cellular level. This is the importance of selenium amino acids in the human beings. Uh, this is the selenocysteine, as you can see the, from the graph, it has increased. Uh, but uh, there was another part of my study, since I had a uh, very restricted time, so I didn't increase all the slides. Uh, I haven't, uh, the part that is not there is uh, I have also tried to mitigate the effect of selenium by uh, into, uh, supplementing with uh, uh, sulfate. Okay. So that part is uh, there still in the graph, but uh, I, I'm not mentioning it in my study over here. Selenomethionine equally increased. Um, yeah, sure, sure, thank you. So this is uh, the estimation of DNA damage by the tunnel assay. We know that we, very, we are all aware of tunnel assay and it was revealed by the percentage of scattering through the flow cytometry method. And these are the tunnel assay uh, <coughs> cytometry graphs that you can see. There's most uh, scattering at the higher concentration, less at the lower concentration. Uh, I'll skip this slide. So this is my conclusion that uh, yeah, there was the dose dependent increment in all the enzyme activities, almost all the enzyme activities, uh, in order to, um, in the rice seedlings that I started, uh, to. Uh, safeguard it from the uh, harmful influence of selenium and um, these all resulted the production of amino acid as well as the production of uh, other glutathione pathway, the induction, everything all helped to uh, show better development of the plant which were exposed to selenium. Now these are the references, some of the references, the business references are also there. And this is my acknowledgement. I do acknowledge the principal of my college and my sir. And uh, thank you so very much. I would also like to extend my gratitude to sir, who at very short notice, uh, and all the students of this conference who uh, bear with all the uh, inconveniences and they have to bear a lot for me. So thank you so much. And thank you very, very much for patience with your Thank you.
if it is in root or it is degraded in fruits, it does not matter. If it accumulates in seeds, then it matters. Sir, uh, after the germination study, and so uh, since uh, germination is also very important, because I won't get the plant if it does, the seed does not, uh, is not uh, germinating. So the toxic effect, I have studied that much, not much I have done. So I have seen that uh, after 10 micromole, uh, germination is almost uh, reducing a lot. In uh, around 20, 25 micromole, there is no germination. The toxic effect is already over there. Okay. Okay, thank you.
돈도 이거 이거 이러세요 돈도 걸어서 Bosan ini GPA hari kalau mana? Apa ni mak dosa kat sini? Kita boleh datang message pun boleh. Tapi mak ada mesti di luar. Hari kalau? Stand up back to us. No, I don't know. 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 I don't Itu kan orang singi bu, apa ni pas tu? Potong bayi tu nak buat mana? Ini tu siapa ni? Samai mana? Kau buat mana? Ini tu siapa? Five hundred mana? Five hundred kira mana? Arjib itu tu.
Welcome back everyone. Uh, our chief guest of the today's event uh, is an esteemed Indian politician who was elect elected to the Lok Sabha, the Parliament of India. Uh, Honorable Dr. Rajdeep Paisal will join us through online mode. The time has come to adjourn this very beneficial today international seminar where the knowledgeable dignitaries and experts from different corners of the Bimstead countries have come together to brainstorm ways to uplift the medicinal plant sector. We feel privileged to have been able to witness this event. Without diffusing the momentum of the seminar, it is my honor to welcome Dr. Munikanda Thapasa, Division Chief, Ayurveda and Alternative Medicine Division, Department of Ayurveda and Alternative Medicine, Kathmandu, to come up on the dais and to address the closing remarks on the session. I request 
Ishan and Rasi to felicitate Dr. Thapa sir. Very good afternoon, nearly good evening. Namaste, Subhasandhya. <coughs> Honorable chief guest, uh, member of parliament, respected delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure and honor to hear the presentation, so many presentations on different technical sessions and provide my closing remarks. As we have heard over past 36 hours, opportunity and challenges of many medicinal herbs, domestic countries, medicinal plant based therapies, traditional therapies global trade possibilities from domestic countries. Research presentation in medicinal plants. I hope that what we have learned through seminars will help us a lot in future. Here are some way forward from our site. We can work together and send proposal for respective organization in respective countries. So, single certificate valid for all domestic countries. Second is exploration of market for small scale cultivators of medicinal and aromatic plants or farmers. Exchange program of subject exports from domestic countries. Joint effort should be taken for conservation and sustainable usage of maps, medicinal and aromatic plants, regional level highly sophisticated lab for standardization and germ plant conservation. Before ending my few words, I would like to convey a special thanks to organizer of this today's event. IIT Guwahati, 
uh, for your kind information, invitation. So we are here and did darshan of Kamakha temple, Brahmaputra river, like right. Uh, very much thanks all of you and all of our class. Namaste. Thank you so much, sir, for closing the remarks. Now I will hand over my to Dr. Sadatasana, sir. I request Sadatasana to come. Right now, uh, with us, we have got our uh, chief guest for this particular session, Honorable Dr. Rajdi Roy. Uh, as it is already uh, introduced, he is Member of Parliament from Shinshir, Assam. Uh, but not only that, a very special connection he is having with this particular session, because he was always inspiring us to do something about Bimstek region. and. Uh, because he is also in the Parliamentary Committee of Ministry of External Affairs. And if I am not wrong, sir, you are representing India in Bimstek region. So, welcome to this session, sir. Thank you very much for joining. We are going to listen to you. But before that, uh, we, we will also want to uh, you know, invite our <coughs> other speakers, delegates who are there, there with us for uh, a very brief uh, close comment. So uh, maybe I can start with Professor Liaka Ali Khan sir, who was there uh, from Bangladesh. So very quickly, uh, if we can give some clo closing remarks for this session. Honorable Chief Guest and Distinguished guests and the audience offline and online. Good afternoon. It was really a very exciting experience for me to attend this meeting because as a health personnel or a medical personnel, I have attended so many meetings related to medicinal plants, but this is from a department in IIT which is related to agriculture and which is related to rural development. So I think this dimension is very, very important that medicinal plant is not only an issue of traditional practitioners or medical people or pharmaceutical companies. So I think the deliberations in this seminar was truly multidisciplinary, which is very much required, and also the trading personalities, government officials, and being stick from Bimstek countries, many of the representatives were here. I think this deliberation will be very, very important in the way to design and way forward. And as discussed several times over this meeting, I hope that IIT Guwahati will work, this particular department will work as a hub to create such kind of network within the countries, which is very much essential. This is essential for creating coordinated policies, strategies, guidelines, so that this exchange is possible, not only human resource exchange, but exchange of ideas and exchange of various kind of guidelines uh, so, so that uh, this can become a trading uh, uh, unit in future, as well as a hub for you know, developing medicinal plants based on science, based on evidence, but at the same time driving towards the interest of the common people for the betterment of the common people for which traditional medicine or medicinal plants were originally meant for. So with this, I would like to thank the organizers, particularly uh, the, uh, the uh, organizing uh, uh, engine, I should say, uh, Dr. Siddharth and his very, very energetic colleagues and the superior departmental head and others who are very, very crucial in uh, implementing this uh, plan of the uh, 
seminar and I would like to thank you again Dr. Siddharth and the team, my gratitude to you. Thank you very much.
भारतीय शर्मा
is that we have to create evidence in such a way that the society does not question us when we propound our theory on a worldwide basis. So we need to take care of all these. We should encourage uh, researchers, we should encourage papers to be written based on those researches and it should be given adequate publicity. I am very happy to tell you that the extensive exploration of the scope of traditional medicinal plants from Thailand, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and of course India and Sri Lanka has added to our immense repertoire of knowledge and, and hopefully we will go a long way in uh, writing those, recording those incidents and those plants and take them forward to the next level. Scrutiny on the holistic treatment of human body and how a native medicinal plant and herbal diet are an indispensable part of primary health care has also to be studied. This is why it is even more important for the region where the PHC system is not adequate, we need to develop those systems. We in India have developed the Ayush department, which is looking after all these issues. Ayush department is opening up multi-speciality hospital, holistic approaches, and we have seen this department as far as in India as a lawmaker, I can tell you, lots of money are being pumped into to develop the infrastructure of Ayush based treatment and even medicinal plant. I put on record the efforts made by IIT Guwahati on uh, studies of diseases like osteoarthritis with all herbal medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. It is a very cost effective way of uh, you know, giving treatment to a poor class of society which can benefit from this Ayurvedic uh, treatment and this uh, herbal medicinal products. I have heard the deliberation of Dr. Liyakar Pali and Dr. Vasudev Upadhyay. I must compliment both of you coming from Bangladesh and Nepal that your country has done immense good work in this field. And I am sure that in the coming days also with the collaboration of all these big state countries, we can take our goal of uh, propagating herbal medicine to the next level. Friends, the knowledge flow of medicinal plants from various social strata through the women form and the old people has come down to our generation. We have the advantage of technology on our part. We should use this technology to record the benefits, to uh, rightfully not just record, to record the benefits and the effects of all these plants so that our future generation can benefit from all. Uh, before I end, I would like to tell uh, our viewers there that India government has uh, promised a line of credit to Bangladesh government whereby we are moving speedily forward in the construction of a BIMSTEC headquarter in Bangladesh. And I, I assure you, this, with the establishment of a BIMSTEC headquarter in Bangladesh, the South Asia and the Southeast Asia connect will be more intense and we can develop Northeast as one of the hubs of medicinal plants in the world. The biodiversity, for which we can be proud of, will give us rich resources for our study and activities. Today, I would not like to uh, prolong my speech, but as a doctor, I would request all of you to put your head together, to go through all the deliberation that took place in the last few days, so that we can take, take the next step forward and in the process, leave a good legacy for the next generation to follow. I compliment especially Dr. Siddhartha Sina, who has been a moving force behind uh, organizing this seminar. My best wishes to all the international delegates who have come. My best wishes to all the participants from our country. 
I wish all the luck to all of you. But before I end, I would like to announce the result of the competition that took place amongst all of the, uh, all of the delegates in the certain category. Uh, if everybody is ready, I can go ahead with the announcement, Siddhartha. Yes, sir. Please. Go okay. ahead then. So, so in the online oral presentation category, the winner is Mr. Bimal Chetri, and he is from Bhutan. The winner is Dr. A. Neshwar Devi, and she is from India. In the poster presentation, the winner is Dr. Devduti Tatta. Devduti Tatta. In the the winner is Ms. Juma Khatun. So these are the four winners that uh, in these last two days we have seen. I congratulate all the winners. Hard luck to all the other participants. May you try your luck next time. I hope you will be successful. And my best wishes to all the delegates coming from all the countries. Once again, thank you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for uh, such encouraging words. And sir, for following your advice or following your blessings, we also want to announce today that uh, we, uh, with our own humble effort, and also we want uh, uh, Guwahati Ayurvedic College also to help us in that motive. We want to create a hub here for medicinal plants. And to mark that, we want to take an advantage we want to take the advantage of uh, this forum and I would like to call our uh, HOC of School of Agronomic Technology and Dr. Vasudev, Vasudev Upadhyay for exchange of some uh, excellent example of culture and knowledge because I must tell all of you that from the government of Nepal side we are being gifted their traditional wisdom in the form of a book which uh, Dr. Vasudev Upadhyay will uh, hand over to our uh, head. And this is the first exhibit we want to keep in our database of medicinal plants. And in that, we also would like to uh, get help from Guwahati Ayurvedic College. So and, and after this thing, I will probably call you for uh, the same thing and for your closing remarks as well.
uh, what he is telling that we are hundred percent agree the therapy part definitely coming the IVD college will be the best as because we have two hundred better hospital and we have a six department post graduation out of these four departments the technical department. So I'm uh, very much happy to uh, sign an MOU with proper uh, involvement with our government and definitely IIT Gohani uh, will take the other part of that and the therapy part definitely taken by the uh, by IIT College. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are now uh, at the end of this two days deliberation. I am pretty sure uh, all of you will go with some good memories from here. And uh, in our next endeavors or in our next programs, we can uh, find all of you here again. And uh, of course, not just that, for other activities which we are planning now, we are expecting your uh, coordination support from all of you, not just from this country, from also other Bimstick countries who are here. Uh, so before we end, just an official vote of thanks I must spell out. I'll start with uh, the honorable chief guest of our inaugural session, His Excellency Dr. Shah Mohammad Tanvir Mansoor, the Assistant High Commissioner of Bangladesh to India, who was instrumental in uh, connecting Bangladesh government to this program. Also from Bangladesh, Professor Liyakat Ali uh, Sir, who was here with a very short notice and enlightened us in many occasions. And I'm pretty sure we are going to get his help for creation of this network in future. I'd like to uh, thank our guest of honor in the inaugural session, Dr. Tanuja Nesari, the CEO of NMPB, also the entire NMPB team for supporting us uh, with the fund for this program, and also uh, intellectual support from their side. I'd like to thank uh, the team from Nepal, headed by Dr. Vasudev Upadhyay, Director General, Department of Ayurveda and Alternative Medicine, Nepal, for coming here and encouraging and supporting us. I'd like to thank uh, the team from Thailand, led by Dr. Bonsai Vishitanan, the Deputy Director General of the Department of Thai Traditional and Alternative Medicine, who was kind enough to spare his uh, time from his busy schedule. And also they, from their side, we have got some uh, uh, you know, transfer of knowledge already. They have also shared the same way Nepal government has shared their traditional wisdom with us, which we are going to uh, curate in our repository, which we have just announced. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Rajat Kumar Kundumakara, who was uh, who actually enlightened us with uh, with his deep research work on curcumin. I'd like to thank Dr. R. Sridharan, uh, the Chief Medical Officer in FSG, the Nodal Officer of Siddha from SMPB Puducherry for coming here and enlightening us. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Vishnu Prashad Sharma, uh, from former professor and HOD of uh, Government Ayurvedic College Assam. In spite of his uh, you know, busy schedule and uh, impairment or health uh, impairment, he was here and gave an excellent talk. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Krishna Mani Thakuria from USTM for delivering a nice lecture on sociology of health. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Mani Prashad Dinola, Deputy Chief Biodiversity Officer, Bioprospecting and Access and Benefit Sharing Program, National Biodiversity Center, Ministry of Agriculture and Forest, Thipu Bhutan. Uh, he was here today online. And he was also instrumental in connecting us with Bhutan government. So thank you, uh, Mani Prashad ji, for your kind uh, kindness. I would like to thank also Dr. A. B. Ramashree, the Director of Research and Finance, Spice Board, Kochi. She was not only kind enough to deliver a lecture, but also she has connected this program with Spice Board, because Spice Board is one such agency 
which has lot of overlapping weakness in the aromatic plant. And uh, I believe, and of course I think our other delegates also would believe that it is by efficient networking we can support this sector well. It's not just one agency, one government who can support this sector. It is a network that can bring this sector, uh, you know, really into that position where it is not just going to, you know, support livelihood for many, but also the uh, primary healthcare system of these Bimstrek countries can be really, really uh, changed by uplifting this sector. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Narayan Prasad Yadav, the principal scientist from Herbal and Medicinal Product Division of CMAP Lucknow for coming here and uh, enlightening us. And I'm sure again with CMAP we will have a lot of collaborations, a lot of scope is there for uplifting this sector in all these uh, Bimstake countries. I would also like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Ramakant Sharma for coming here and encouraging us as well as uh, you know, uh, giving us the word that we will always get support from Guwahati Ayurvedic College for our endeavors in medicinal plant sector. I'd also like to uh, thank our chief guest today uh, for this valedictory session, Dr. Rajdeep Roy. He, will, he is always an encouraging person for us. For all our endeavors, we get his blessings like this event. I'm pretty sure in our future activities also we are going to support, get support from him. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we all understand your busy schedule. Uh, you could find this time to join this program. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, also, I would like to thank Professor N.K. Dubey. Uh, today we heard him uh, a very powerful and uh, informative lecture we got from him and I'm pretty sure his, uh, his uh, wisdom we are going to get in future also is going to guide us in our future endeavors. Thank you so much sir for your lecture as well as for your support. And now the uh, time for thanking our own administration who has supported us to uh, do this program. The head of the school Deputy Director, Director and all the administrative staffs who have supported us to uh, make this program possible and last but not the least the participants without whom we were uh, we couldn't have pulled this off. Thank you so much for coming here and I'm pretty sure it is not going to be a relation of a day. Your stay in this campus was nice and pleasant. I, I hope all of you will carry some pleasant memories and you will come back again in our future programs. And of course, our student team, those who were spending, I think, four or five sleepless nights for this program, thank you all for supporting this program. A big round of applause for everybody. I forgot one important entity, the co-organizer of this event, uh, Mr. Shankadeep Rajchadri and uh, his team. Uh, we thank him for joining hand with us to conduct this program. It's an unfortunate incident that he has lost his mother yesterday. That's why he is not here on his behalf and uh, for both the organizer and co-organizers uh, side. We thank you all. Thank you. So with this word, we are officially closing the session. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. So as they say, kuch mitha hona chahiye ant mein. So we should have some uh, snacks and then proceed further. So please join the high tea which is next door. <laughs> <laughs>